Where is this? Where is this located? Ah, got it. That is in the good spot. Uh, test, 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 test. One, two, three. Yep. Choop, choop, choop. Hey. Oh, ah, yeah, there it is. Hey, yo, 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 yo. Uh, can you give me just a quick level? Oh, perfect. You're good. <laughs> You're good to go. <laughs> Nothing wrong with your levels. Right where they should be. Right in the pocket. <clears throat> it's congested from a uh, from my breakfast. From your breakfast? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. What did it contain? Sorry, what? Who? Why? Why are you congested from your breakfast? What was in it? So, so wheat products sometimes in the mornings oh, get me okay. gets me congested. Yes. <clears throat> Shall we do Not this? always. <laughs> Shall we do this? What? Yeah, the show. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> Get it. Adam Curry, John C. Devora. It's Thursday, December 10th, 2020. This is your award-winning Gibbon Nation Media Assassination Episode 1302. This is No Agenda. Getting my bang bang from Fang Fang and broadcasting live from Opportunity Zone 33 here in the frontier of Austin, Texas, capital of the drone star state. In the morning, everybody, I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley, where it turns out that podcasting is a thing. I'm John C. Dvorak. It's Craig Vaughn and Buzzkill. In the morning. No, 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 wait. You're just discovering this? Who told you? Megan Kelly? How did you find out podcasting's a thing? Brunetti. Oh, our super producer, uh, Dana Brunetti. Yeah, yeah. super producer. What did, he, what did he say? What did he say? He said that he's it's doing a, a podcast thing. He's what? done podcasting. He's doing podcasts? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's done it before. He's taken them off the market. They were so good. Uh, <laughs> he took, wait a minute. He took them off the market? They were so good. <clears throat> yes. He says that uh, he, yes, he had a, he was doing a Hollywood podcast and apparently it was so good. Yeah. That it would have cost them business. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> All right. So, are you going to give us a report on your wine tasting? Sure. We went up to wine tasting. We went to taste it. Let's, oh, let, let, let's just set it up. Dana Brunetti, super producer from Hollywood, producer of the No Agenda Show. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and he's a reluctant associate producer and still irked about well, it. Well, he thinks that's a lame credit. He feels that it's, oh, no, it's it, beyond it, it's it beyond can't, lame. It can't him. be on his record to be associate executive producer. Oh no, it's, it's beyond lame. <laughs> All right, give us a little report. Great place. We went up to this. This is one of the cult wineries that uh, sells ex very expensive wine. One of our producers happens to be working up there, Amy. And uh, we got a we got the the VIP tour of drank like a I know tasted let's say uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten nine uh, or I'm sorry six first flight and then another flight of now was Dana also wines. spitting or was he swallowing he was tried spitting but apparently he couldn't taste <laughs> properly by spitting okay you don't just spit you got a little you got to dribble you got to dribble it out. <laughs> Into the glass, yeah. I guess. Don't drink. <laughs> it's like a spittoon. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd be another one to go tasting with. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yes, so I we would. had these. These are these are two, hundred point wines. All the wines except one of them were hundred points from you know in the good old days when Parker was actually doing the tasting. No. Oh. And they it, it really brought in. And it, of course, I managed to get the whole tasting off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> Because this this guy that the winemaker Pierre. Uh, oh wait a minute! Is, you got into a fight with Pierre? You did not. No, I didn't. No, uh, and his uh, he has a very uh, photogenic, pretty daughter uh, who's also the winemaker Helene, with a with a great French name, 
No, we started talking about, you were started doing the wine BS thing. Well, yeah, well, I have this, da, 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 da. Next thing you know, we're talking about Armagnac and Cognac, and everyone else is really, you know, uh, Brunetti's going for his uh, Glock. He's just about to put it in his mouth. Everyone else is dousing themselves with kerosene. This thing went on and on. And so... <laughs> I was having a good time with Pierre. Oh, now everyone knows how I. Fe- no one knows how I feel about doing this show. Exactly. Where's my Glock? <laughs> so the whole thing was. But it uh, sounds like you had a good time. It was fun. I had a good time. Yeah, and uh, and and I learned quite a bit. What I did learn, I'll just say this for anyone out there who likes wine. I have to say, I've suspected this for a long time. What they really do at this winery is. They do Cabernet, Merlot, and Cabernet Franc wines, but then they're three different wines. But Sonoma County really is, should be California's home for Merlot. They can make some, the, the, the level of quality of the Merlot is out, out, of, the, out of this world. It's, it's on par with anything anywhere else. Hey, okay, a couple questions. One. Uh, did you have to wear a mask at the winery and like put the mask up? Oh, take your, er, sip, uh, mask just, let me just say flat out. All proper mask and social distancing and all required California, all, I'm sorry, all California requirements for social distancing and masking up were observed to the letter. Oh, br- <laughs> yes. I'm sure that made it quite in- enjoyable. Did you have your gloves it on was, as well? It, it, we observed every And your face rule. shield. <laughs> We had the face mask, the plastic guards. No. Everything. It was to observe to the letter. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Understood. And uh, Dana and, and Brunetti. Dana, oh, Dana's, Dana's fiance came too. Well, this is going to be my exact Alex. question. Tell us about the fiance. She's the, she is just a sweetheart. Yeah. That's all there is to it. She's really. You know, how do she's, guys she like Brunetti get all the luck? That's just. How does that no, work? You can tell he's one of. Brunetti is. He's one, one of. of those he's guys. a really down to earth guy, believe it or not. Yeah. But he's one of those guys who's just got. He's got the touch or something. He's like a Gladstone gander. He's just. Yeah. Well, we need some of that touch from him then. Touch us. Yeah. Touch us, Dana. Touch I, us. He's going to be short, short term, <laughs> in my opinion. But she's a charmer. She is the heiress to the Bijan family, uh, fashion no. family. Oh. And she is really not. In, she can she got get us a partnership, dis- but she. Can she get Tina a discount? Runs the com- can she get Sorry. Tina a discount? <laughs> can she get us a discount? I think so. Okay. Oh, just checking. But and the the point is, is that she's uh, uh, she's just really she's nice, fantastic, she's, she's very pleasant. Good. And what uh, is she charming. doing with Brunetti? Then is the question. Well, <laughs> not to ask. <laughs> they actually met on on a dating app. No, you're telling me that multi hundred millionaire Hollywood producers use dating apps. This is some high end dating apps that kind of you have to qualify wow. to get on. Oh. And what made it coincidental, not that I want to tell these stories out of church, but there were two of these high-end dating apps, and the, both apps put the two of them together. That's the algo, man. Yeah, <laughs> yes. it's, the same, it's actually the same app. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh-oh, uh-oh. seven cars. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a seven-car Zephyr economic report. Tell the boys over at the CNBC Squawk Box desk. The economy is not doing that well. Bitcoin, 18,185. <laughs> oh, my God! Woo! Listen to that horn! Okay. Well, we'll just anyway, before I go, I, yes. I'll tell them what, I have one Brunetti story that he rolled out that I thought was interesting. It's okay. a Hollywood right. story. And you asked him about Kevin Spacey, which you'll tell me about off air, right? I don't, didn't, we didn't talk oh, about Kevin Spacey. Uh, okay. But we did talk about the movie Captain Phillips. Oh, with uh, Tom Hanks. Yeah. Okay. He was a producer on that. Yeah. And he, uh, they cast that, the Somali pirates by going to Minnesota. <laughs> the Tahitla <Elon> Omar. <laughs> Wow, yeah. this is already funny. <laughs> hey, Elon, you got any pirates for us? They went to Minnesota, did a cattle call, brought in a whole, everybody from Minnesota, a bunch of Somalis. Car- None of them knew how to act. No, these are they method kinda, actors. 
<laughs> well, it turned out that they were method actors, and half the, uh, most of the scenes with Hanks on the on the bridge were ad libbed. Wow, that's a take. <laughs> and and after the yeah, they ad libbed a lot of it, if not most of it. And then at the end of the, after the shoot, everything was wrapped. One of the Somalis got nominated for the Academy Award, that's and Tom right. Hanks didn't. Oh, that's right. I remember that guy winning. And that was just some dude they picked up off of a cattle call in Minneapolis? Yeah. No, that's <laughs> fantastic. Wow, that's a good piece of Hollywood trivia. That was a good one. From sommeliers to Somali pirates, ladies and gentlemen, the unimitable John C. Dvorak. Well done, sir. It's the Someone finally made a jingle for us. It was fun. Yeah. Very and fun. And Brunetti, by the way, is like a hands-on guy. I mean, he's, he's bulldozing his own property. And he's got this, you know, that truck. He's got a picture of his truck. Yeah. He, he didn't get a, a giant F-150, 253. He's got the 450. <laughs> a big, giant diesel truck with four wheels in the back. Okay, simmer down, Donna Summer. I know you're all excited about the big the big truck. Big truck. Big truck. Anyway. All right. Well, there's a lot to get. Thank you for that report. That that, that was that was good. Ah, shake the cobwebs loose so we can get into today's show because there's some cool stuff going on. Very cool stuff. Particularly as we get closer to uh, a vaccine for the coronavirus. Everyone's getting all uh, all excited and there's all kinds of stuff going on, but. I think we should uh, start with a couple of reports just so we get a lay of the land to know how afraid we should be. Uh, Fauci is out and about with Burks telling everybody we should be very, very, very concerned, afraid, and if not terrified. CBS. Tonight, a grim reality. Grim. Every hour, the U.S. has seen more than 8,000 new COVID cases and nearly 100 deaths. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling Nora O'Donnell today, so the worst is yet to come. The blip from oh. Thanksgiving isn't even here yet, so we're getting those staggering numbers of new cases and hospitalizations before we even feel the full brunt of the Thanksgiving holiday. To illustrate how fast the virus can spread, this map shows cell phone signals of Penn State University students as they travel Thanksgiving weekend. I love how they do that. It's that they connect coronavirus spread to cell phones that somehow they're magically just able to track and show on show on a map. Thank you. And, and that's just, oh, this is how it happens. Look at those young, infected, seething, pus-driven students. What are they doing? And uh, the worst is yet to come. Is it? <laughs> well, do you? I, I've seen, I, I'm a little hesitant to move forward because I see that you have some COVID stuff. If you have other reports that we need to listen to oh, well, I mean, before we get deep into the vaccines, real, then yeah. Let's, I think they're kind of, I, well, I've got two, th- two angles here. Okay. When I got my rundowns. All right. Yeah. I want rundowns. Well, let's go with the COVID rundown from Democracy Now! The U.S. recorded over 2,500 deaths and over 215,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases yesterday alone. Confirmed. As the average number of daily cases has sailed past 200,000, health experts say the first signs of spikes related to Thanksgiving travel are starting to emerge. Oh, wait a minute. Fauci just said they weren't there yet. He says it's still coming. This is not. Eh, well, they're not coming. All the reports I have already said that there was a merging. I think you're. This was yesterday, so maybe you were could on be, tu- could you be, got could a Tuesday be. report. Yeah, I'm sorry, Tuesday's report. Cases have risen over the last week in 38 states in the District of Columbia. On Tuesday, President-elect Joe Biden officially introduced his coronavirus response team and outlined his goals for tackling the pandemic when he takes office. Masking, vaccinations, opening schools. These are the three key goals for my first 100 days. This He's team a will help get at the latest, <laughs> at the last 100 million COVID-19 vaccine, at least 100 million COVID vaccine shots into the arms of the American people. <laughs> I don't understand why any speechwriter would approve that line. And he keeps using it over and over. We're going we're gonna to put the shots into the arms of the American people. I don't think that's a positive visual. 
It just doesn't seem like something you want people to be thinking about. But Joe's using it because he's going to be the guy to personally, personally stick that needle in your arm. In the first 100 days. In the first 100 days. The Food and Drug Administrations found Pfizer-BioNTech coronavirus vaccine to be successful in clinical trials, bringing it one step closer to being authorized for widespread use. Authorities say they'll start distributing the vaccine within days of the emergency use authorization, which is expected perhaps tomorrow. This comes as some trial participants warned they experienced intense symptoms, including chills, headaches, and fatigue after the second shot, which needs to be administered about three weeks after the first dose hey, does anyone actually watch democracy now do we have any numbers on this i mean i'm watching it well i know but is it an influential program not that i know of well, i hope not okay because we play so much but it's of on, it. you, they're, they're running it on pbs so hmm. you know people who watch pbs religiously and don't refuse to watch anything else okay they watch so it. it is influential then it is influential i think it is well i don't know how it it's watched. Just, 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 put just, that, just, just a quick that thing far. before you go to the next report. A quick intermezzo from Fauci. Uh, as I said, you know, he's he's doing the rounds, and he, he seems to be contradicting that the surge is already here, or we've already seen it. But he goes on the Cuomo show, as in not uh, not the kid Cuomo, but Governor Cuomo, and they're yapping back and forth. And this is oh, the, the Emmy winning show. Yes, the Emmy award winning Governor Cuomo. And he's and it's gone to his head now. I think your voice on saying that the vaccines are safe uh, would be important. I said that as soon as uh, the vaccine is deemed ready and safe, I'll be the first one to take a vaccine. Uh, maybe we enlist you. I'll do it with you. We'll do an ad telling New Yorkers it's safe to take the vaccine. To uh, to you know put us together. We're like the uh, modern day uh, De Niro and Pacino. You can be which whenever whichever you want. You can be the De Niro or Pacino. <laughs> Fauci I'll and Pacino. Cuomo, I'll give you a friend. Who, who, who do you want to be, De Niro or Pacino? Which one do you want I to be? I love them both. <laughs> I love them both. I don't want to insult one or the other. If I take one, I don't want to hurt the feelings of the other. Yeah. So Who's the politician? Oh, man. They do love themselves, though. They love themselves. They're just all full of it. Beautiful. Cuomo's disgusting. Let's play part two of this clip. Meanwhile, a new report finds as many as nine out of 10 people in dozens of poorer countries around the world could miss out on the vaccine next year no. as the bulk of the supply is bullet. bought up by wealthier <laughs> nations. The People's Vaccine Alliance says wealthy countries are hoarding enough doses to vaccinate their populations nearly three times over. In other <laughs> coronavirus news, <laughs> Iran says U.S. Whenever a broadcaster does that, I just have to go back and review. She choked on her own saliva here. It was pretty cool. Listen. In other coronavirus news, Iran right, says jubilations nearly three times over. In other coronavirus news, Iran says U.S. sanctions have prevented it from making a payment to COVAX, the U.N.'s mechanism to ensure oh, no. fair distribution of vaccines. Possibly Wait, hold on a second. Stop. A couple of things. So this U.N. mechanism to make sure everybody gets vaccines, COVAX. Yeah. If you don't give them money. Yeah. You're out of the you're, you're out, out of, of the it. club. Get out. You're out of the club. Yeah. I thought this was a thing to give make sure everybody got the vaccine the world over, not not to gouge people. Ah, uh, yeah, but there's a problem now, you see, because President Trump is uh, saying America first, and the elites of the world are are confused and and getting angry because well, this is supposed to be the whole world. How come you get it first, America? Yeah, this well, is the, the problem. The UK already got it first, so that's uh, But I think there's a reason they got it first. We'll finish this clip. To COVAX. Well, the U- wait, wait, one well, more I should, I should mention. They don't go into it in much detail, but this People's Vaccine Alliance. Yeah. Yeah, keep an eye on them. <laughs> yeah. There we go on. Yeah. It from making a payment to COVAX, the UN's mechanism to ensure fair distribution of vaccines, possibly putting its receipt of nearly 17 million doses in jeopardy. That amount would cover around 10% of Iran's population. Um, so the president did this vaccine summit. He signed his executive order to make sure everything gets out there as soon as possible. 
And he very clearly said, if uh, if we need more, then I'll just evoke the uh, Defense Production Act, and that would then force a Pfizer or Moderna or Johnson & Johnson uh, to focus on America first. And I, I think we have paid for a lot of it. But anyway, yes, we, we know that the Brits jumped the gun, and that took everyone by surprise, especially Fauci, who was complaining about it. Now, at the time... Um, we deconstructed it as well. He has more stock in Moderna than Pfizer, so maybe that's why he was irked. But the Johnson and Johnson vaccine is coming as well, and I don't know if it's uh, the FDA is meeting as we speak to uh, look at the emergency use authorization for Pfizer. I don't know if they're doing it for Moderna yet. The Johnson and Johnson is coming up now. The difference with Johnson and Johnson is they went the traditional route with attenuated virus they grow it in the egg uh, in the egg culture or whatever their process is but it's not repeat not an mrna uh, vaccine which is this new kind which has never been tried at this scale which i think the people around the world are generally uh, grossly underinformed about it i would think and and so when the president slipped up on something talking about First, you'll hear him mention this clip, talk about Johnson & Johnson, which he, I think he's the only one that's promoted that, which we immediately took as, well, they're losers. And they are. They're way behind. They haven't, uh, you know, they're, they're not in the same, uh, they're not up front like the mRNA vaccine. Well, the track vaccines. for doing that, kind of, the real vet type of old-fashioned vaccine is is long. Yes, it takes long. And it, it's even amazing that that they're done this early. Um and they and I think they waited a little bit too, just to make sure that they didn't announce before the uh, before the election. So the president is talking about three vaccines: the Johnson and Johnson, and then Pfizer and Moderna. And I, I got to think that maybe the Brits really should have held off a little bit because, well, listen, uh, as you know, the Johnson and Johnson's a one dose, one shot vaccine. So we're going to see how that works. That would be very helpful if that all came out. And I think it probably will. Also, they're showing tremendous, uh, tremendous promise. All of them. Tremendous problem. We're we're, uh, we're very hopeful that the FDA. Did you hear that? The first time he says tremendous promise. And then he he then he, and he says tremendous problems and he and he swallows the problems word as he's I think Play talking again. about the other two vaccines. Yeah, listen. All came out and I think it probably will. Also, they're showing tremendous uh, tremendous promise. All of them, tremendous problem. We're we're uh, <laughs> we're very hopeful that the FDA will authorize the Pfizer vaccine within days. We got to huh. get it moving. I don't know. It's it. I, as usual, I'm, I'm looking for things. Uh, I personally think the mRNA vaccines are something to keep your eye on. You know, you may not want to jump into that right away, especially since CNN and the world really was promoting the first Brit to receive the mRNA vaccine. And it was a lady that CNN had on uh, in October. Same photo. Same photo. <laughs> this lady is world famous. She's all over the place. And interesting, at the time, which was around Halloween, she was wearing a Christmas sweater. I remember finding that odd when I saw that picture a couple months ago. Now, now she's the first one to get the vaccine. So that yeah, doesn't build confidence. We have all the comparative photos in the newsletter. Yeah, that doesn't build confidence at all. And there are many groups <laughs> who uh, are not confident, at least not with President Trump. Mayor, you know, we're getting close. I'm sorry, this is Brolf with... Uh, Mayor uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms of Atlanta. Mayor, you know, we're getting closer and closer to an approved vaccine, but a new Pew Research poll shows only 42% of black Americans say they would definitely or probably get the va- the vaccine. How problematic could that lack of confidence be? Well, Wolf, it is problematic, but you, you know the history. It, it goes back many decades, of course, to the Tuskegee experiment um, and the African Americans being intentionally um, injected with a disease, so there is a history there. This is it, this is going to take a lot of education. It is going to take creating trust uh, with a community of people. Um, I do believe once there is a transition of power, there will be more trust in the Biden Harris administration, and I think that will go a long way. I will give people confidence that this vaccine will be safe. I suspect you're right, uh, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms of Atlanta. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe. <laughs> Stay
is a... I have a feeling uh, both of them are wrong. I do not think the African-American community is going to be feeling any better about it with Joe and uh, Kamala, especially not if they're properly informed about the newness of this methodology. But, of course, we'll just try and get to them everywhere we can. Remember we heard about the United Nations-based group that was uh, training doctors to be guides on TikTok and guide everybody and help people understand how everything is good and you should trust them. Well, we've got one of those in the wild. There's, there's, this is actually one, this one woman on TikTok and she's very recognizable with uh, kind of these uh, big reddish glasses. You know, she's just iconic to look at. Oh, okay, I, I remember her. And now she had on another woman doctor. I think she may be Chinese American, not sure, but just listen to the uh, made for TikTok message. Let's go over reasons why the COVID mRNA vaccine was not rushed. Number one, this is not new technology. Companies like Moderna have already had this platform for developing mRNA vaccines for quite some time. So everything's Jeez, already been in place down. to get the wheels turning to develop a new mRNA vaccine. Yes, this is the first inhuman approved mRNA vaccine, but it's not new technology. Number two, necessity is a mother of invention. There is an urgency to get a vaccine developed quickly. So money was poured in to support the development of these vaccines. That helped expedite it. Number three, traditional vaccines tend to be developed using something called cell culture, in which we rely on cells in a lab to grow the antigen we need to create that traditional vaccine. But cell culture is resource-heavy, time-consuming, and you may run into issues like your cells getting contaminated and that whole batch gets thrown out. It's a fairly quick process to make mRNA in a lab. Number four, how quickly you can complete a clinical trial depends on recruitment and also how quickly you can get to the outcome. Luckily, tons of people volunteered for these studies. And there's tons, tons of COVID tons. around, so we were able to see very quickly if it worked or not. And the lastly, the regulatory people? red tape is what was expedited. These clinical trials were still run totally by the books. <laughs> that's their... Tons, uh, tons th- of that's their, hey, uh, hey, this, this Stand may, on this scale, sir. This may work. This type of propaganda may work. They just cut, cut it up, YouTube style, throw it on TikTok, make it in 58 minutes. It may work. I don't know. But they're Nobody certainly trying. They're certainly trying. Oh, don't worry. We're, we're trying everywhere to change people's minds. And what they're doing to kids now, the toy makers, ah, ah, these guys are great. This is a report from a toy store in Spain where they're just a little bit ahead of the curve, but I'm sure we'll have this here for Christmas. This belly doll is being tested for the coronavirus. Not for real, but as part of one of the hot selling toys this Christmas from Spanish toy maker giant Formosa. Unfortunately for this particular belly, being screened by Formosa Chief Executive Marie-Yves Rougeau, the diagnosis is not a good one. (laughs) Before I continue this, so this doll, and the doll can get a coronavirus test, and then you you push uh, the doll's belly or you hold something up for the test, and that's the sound it makes if you test positive and I think this is intended to terrify and terrorize the child into thinking that a nuclear holocaust is upon us when you get a positive test, which could be 97% false positive to start with. Is this is crazy. One. Yeah, that's a nice toy for my kid. That's great. That's a good gift it? toy. <laughs> and then, but then and the more happens to it. The cure, in this case, is being tickled. What you see is this fence comes up in, around the doll, so the doll what? can't get out. Yeah, the doll gets immediately a quarantined. Fence? Yeah, like a green fence. The doll is quarantined. It's fantastic. When this is the, disgusting. Uh, pandemic started, we noticed that the kids who always have a tendency to imitate what the adults do started to want to put uh, masks on their, on their dolls, and we decided no. to actually... Actually, Please. produce a doll with a mask, a Nancy mask, and um, it was really good because Nancy is a reference for the kids and for them, for the kids, it's, it's an example. It's very important that she be wearing a mask to show the example to the kid. Mask up. Also, it, it makes it just normal to wear a mask. And they're really trying to normalize everything with the mask. So this is, and as you probably heard, masks. even if you have the vaccine. Uh, if you've been vaccinated, you will still have to wear a mask for the rest of your life because that's, you know, you're still, you can still give it to other people. 
Never any of this with measles or you know, the MMR stuff. Never, never a mask. How does doesn't is measles airborne? How do kids give measles to each other? Yeah, yeah. Is it airborne? I think it's. Yeah, of course, it's airborne. Yeah, no mask for that. You're vaccinated. No mask. No, but for this, we're going to have to have a mask. And you mask up. And you're told that everyone's all on board with it. You might have seen Saturday Night Live with the audience all masked up, all being. <laughs> Perfect little human resources. Or is there something else going on? Saturday Night Live is continuing to tape with live audiences, even though we're during the pandemic. Lauren, how are they getting away with this? A loophole. They pay their audience members. They pay them 150 bucks to show up, sit indoors as part of that live audience. So technically, they're workers of the show. And that's why, despite all the lockdowns in the spring and New York Governor Cuomo's threats to show shut indoor dining in New York City if the hospitalization rate doesn't immediately level off. Saturday Night Live continues to film. And just paid. the paid extras who are, who are getting paid $150 to risk their life. I find this hilarious. It's unbelievable. That is the funniest clip. Well, it- I'm giving you a clip of the day. Okay. I just had to stop for one second because just as you said that, my MIDI controller crashed. Oh, no. That's okay. It'll it'll be up in a second, and I can pick it right up at the clip of the day. Sorry about that. Well, just go clip of the day. Well, I I don't have to make make the announcement. No, I I have the announcement. I have that. Okay. No, I got that. No, no, no. Trust me. I'm taking any risk on... Losing that beautiful s- setup. Okay, almost there. <sighs> okay, let me just open the clip pins. Yeah, there we go. Right. Well, it's nice to make it within the first 30 minutes of the show. Thank you. Clip of the day. Just just a 30 minutes. Already clip of the day. That means it's going to be a dynamite show. So it all goes downhill from here. In uh, Scandinavia, though, they are one step ahead of us. Not one step ahead of the No Agenda show because we've been expecting this. And we'll see how this plays out in the... United States, but up north, (laughs) here you go, everybody. Your Freedom Pass is on deck. Health Canada is expected to approve the Pfizer vaccine this week, so just in a short matter of time. Polls suggest the majority of Canadians will, in fact, roll up their sleeves, but some will not. And at least one province, Ontario, says anyone who does not will likely face ongoing restrictions while the rest of the population gets back to sort of normal life, Mm -hmm. Laura. Laura McQuillan, I'm referring to, uh, looking at Ontario's plan as the health minister announced yesterday. Yeah, some kind of a card that you would carry that proves you've had your two shots. Some kind of a card. What could it be? Would it just be a card? Or would it be an app? Or would it be a QR code? What's a, what, what, I'm so surprised about this. This is crazy. Of the vaccine could be one shot if it is a one shot vaccine, but most look like they will be two. So once you're fully immunized, you'd have what's been described as a vaccination card, vaccination passport. Uh-huh. You take it when you go to do things that you can't currently do. Once those businesses or places reopen, Health Minister Christine Elliott gave some more details yesterday on just how it might work and where those restrictions might lift for you if you can prove you've been vaccinated. It's going to be really important for people to have for travel purposes, perhaps for work purposes, oh. for going to theatres or cinemas or any other places where people will be in closer physical contact mm-hmm. uh, when we get through the worst of the pandemic. So yes, yeah, that will be <coughs> essential for people to have that. So not mandatory to get the shot, but if you don't get it, you might be opting out of those things that this card enables you to do. As you mentioned, uh, as you heard her mention there, jobs that could be a field such as healthcare, such as being a teacher, you might need to prove that you've been vaccinated because you have that contact with people, but it's not yet clear what power employers would have to require you to prove this. Yeah, this is the conversation we're going to have in the United States. Everywhere in the world, they'll have this. Everywhere. And people, I think people should resist because it's just the beginning. 
Um, there's some very odd reports coming out of England about these first pe- the people who first get the shot. Yeah, are they dying? No, they're not. Like my idea is that you take the shot, you take step one, step outside the clinic, and you fall over. But no, they're <laughs> having like these these migraines and real pain. It's like Bill Gates Gate said, is a lot of pain. Super painful. This shot is super painful. <laughs> Super painful. There's a bunch of like really negative reports, and it turns out that anyone with any sort of allergies, yeah, uh, now they're being yeah, told shouldn't take not it. to take the shot. And anyone who is pregnant or wants to get pregnant should not take the shot. Anyone yes. who is nursing should not take the shot. Anyone who has a pulse and uh, breathing facilities should not take the shot. Let's just remember Bill Gates uh, talking about the. The, you know, really the side effects. So the, the data show that everybody with a high dose had a, a side effect. Yeah, but some of that is, is not dramatic where, you know, it's just, you know, super painful. But yes, there, <laughs> we need to make sure there's not severe. It's not dramatic. It's just uh, super here's, painful. Here's a re- Here's a report from France 24 called the First Jab Report. First shots of a long battle. The year old pensioner from Enniskillen, first to get her COVID vaccine jab, will ask if it's truly the beginning of the end, how the rollout will proceed, not just in Brexit bound Britain where it happened, but across Europe and the world. It's also a chance to measure the significance of the moment. The first ever inoculation against a coronavirus going to market in record time. Record will the public time. be clamoring to be first in line or will skeptics need a lot of convincing? Vaccine politics extends as well, by the way, to that public-private partnership that's made pharmaceutical giants and governments team up with the Pfizer vaccine. It's U.S. Big Pharma, uh, which is banding together with BioNTech. That's a German startup founded by Turkish immigrants. A tale of globalization that's worth noting. Ah! In the face of a disease <laughs> indifferent to territorial boundaries. Oh yes, we all did it together, everybody. That's Let's that's how join hands. Yes, we did it together. Good now, job. Now I do have I do have the hearing reports from the. Uh, yeah, that from the, yeah, that's good. I, before before you play that, just a couple things I want to note. Um, in the Netherlands, the uh, Ministry of Economic Affairs commissioned a survey and they discovered and this is now of a controversial topic that opening restaurants and bars will lead to less spread Uh, so that's a problem for the global community i have gotten in the habit of asking um wherever we're having dinner because we go out one maybe two times a week you know we have our we've been supporting our our favorite restaurants around town and you can ask every single one of them has there ever been a case linked back to your restaurant no none of them not a one well you, i can't do that here because they've closed all our restaurants <laughs> well that does solve the problem doesn't it you can't ask them dead man can't talk and this and the, and are they coming back those restaurants all i see from you is one after another closing for good I think most of them are going to be closed for good. No, it's really a so crime. I'm sorry to hear that. But let's play this clip. Well, one, this one, is the- one other thing um, regarding PCR. Florida Department of Health has now mandated the reporting of cycle thresholds for uh, every PCR, quote, p- a test that has been done. And on the heels of that, you may have heard, it's just, I'll mention this, they... Uh, <laughs> They went to Rebecca Jones' home. This was a woman who was responsible for creating the the cases dashboard in Florida, or I think in one county. And dashboards. she had what? The, yeah, dashboards. Dashboards. And you know, remember, there was a lot of problems with with the reporting. There was a hundred percent positivity rate amongst all of the tests done. This was all getting reported, and it was very confusing. Uh, I don't know if she left or she was fired, but she subsequently is being accused of using the county emergency alert system or an emergency alert system, and may just be for for uh, medical uh, medical professionals to send some message <laughs> of we're all going to die because of Donald Trump, and so that's why they went to her house. She wouldn't let them in. 
uh, became a big deal. She's posting. I love it when people always, when, when the cops come and visit, whether it's true or not, they always will say, they did this in front of my kids. They pointed a gun at my kid's face. You know, there's never really evidence of that, but I love how, the, how that's all. And that's what the, the response is on Twitter. In front of her kids. How, what a low life to arrest your, the mother in front of her kids. Like, jeez. <laughs> Maybe it's only an outrage when it's a white woman. Uh, I'm sure this happens in other communities all the time that you're not outraged by. But well, that is good. The it's cop it, show. It's encouraging. Uh, the cop shows have been, what do you mean? They've been canceled. Cops I, know, the, I said you used to see. Oh, it on used the cop to. Shows. Yeah. Now cops got canceled the minute BLM hit. We've forgotten that already. But it's good that uh, this is the first Department of Health that I know of that is requiring the cycle threshold, which, according to Doctor Fauci himself, should never be above thirty-five cycles. Thirty-three is probably, believe it or not, the ideal to see it. And this is still not a test. And it still doesn't mean that you have a full virus, but okay, at least there's some progress. You know, occasionally the mainstream the mainstream media, of course, they have their their agenda, but the local reporters sometimes slip do up their jobs. <laughs> they slip up doing it all wrong. This is the COVID Kentucky Hospital report right out of one of the little stations there. It was kind of an unintended consequence of COVID. Harrison Memorial Hospital has reached capacity, but it's not COVID patients filling those beds. CEO Sheila Curran says many people with chronic conditions like diabetes, heart disease, and cancer haven't followed up with routine care. And I just feel bad that many of them have waited too long and they're quite ill now, unfortunately. With so many people who need treatment, the hospital is finding creative ways to make sure everyone has a bed. Our tertiary transfer is to Lexington. We are able to maintain the patients that we're waiting on beds for in alternate sites that are here in the hospital. When it comes to outpatient elective procedures, Curran says there's not a problem, but inpatient elective procedures are reviewed on a daily basis. Do we have elective surgical cases that will take an inpatient bed, and are we going to have a bed for that patient? While Curran says the COVID wing is almost completely empty at the moment, she knows that can change quickly. (laughs) I'm just thankful that this week we don't seem to have the COVID cases that need hospitalizations since we do have so many other folks that do need the beds. In Harrison County, Olivia Russell, WKYT. Yeah, it's still around 10% of total hospital bed, uh, ICU bed capacity. Uh, around the United States, so not like they're going to transport people from the left coast to the right coast, but it's still, you know, where it's under 70% occupancy. This time of year, hospitals with full staffing, which of course they don't have because they let everybody go, with full staffing will be 90 or even 100%, right around this time, all the way through February. That's the idea. Yeah, that's how you run it. <laughs> you want to You're run it like an to airline. Run hospitals today. Yeah, like an airline at pretty close to full capacity. So to make a big stink about it being full <laughs> loaded up, which is the media. But when you get to talk to people like that woman there, well, there's no COVID patients here, but we are at full capacity. What's the temperature? And what what's the scenario? in california right now because you're locked down until january 4 i mean yeah you can go out but everything's shuttered and screwed until january 4th what what weather do you have how 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 different is it from texas you know we're seven- right now the weather is we're around um 59 i think we're around 59 degrees or 60 uh-huh. today probably have a high about 70 yeah we're 70 well no today's high will be about 65 okay well so we're 72 they're kind of in the same range. What are you guys doing so wrong? What have you done wrong? What? Why? Why? Well, the, all I can see is that we're in this area, in this area, in the Bay Area, where everything's purple. All the counties are purple <laughs> except San Mateo. We've done everything right. We've masked up. We shut down the restaurants. We, you know, we only ate outside when we had to eat outside. Everything was done by the book. Everyone's wearing masks. They're wearing masks in their car. They're masked, 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 and they're social distancing. So what we've done. Is everything right? And this is the result. I mean, that's just a fact. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Do you think that maybe the 
communist Chinese Communist Party spread a little extra COVID dust on California? I don't think there's any COVID around here. Okay, this is this is what I. By, think by the way, I've always thought I've thought about that too—the idea of reinoculating yeah. with the original. Yeah, come back and do some dose. of that. Yeah. Maybe, but, but there's no evidence. I don't see any people dropping in the streets. There's so well. Well, that I, never I talked happened. To one of my Lib Joe friends. Oh, really? He he says, uh, yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's getting worse than ever. It's exponential. Everyone's getting the COVID. <laughs> Luckily, nobody's dying. <laughs> did he did he say it's exponential? He really said that. This is a an educated. My man. next door neighbor said exponential is the word of the day. My next door neighbor. The two doctors. Mm -hmm. One of them said exp. She said exponential too. They all. Everyone's saying exponential. But exponential is doesn't. It's like it's increasing exponentially. Exponentially. She said. (laughs) Although no one's dying. Luckily, no one's dying. But it's worse than it ever was. You got wait. You got to hear. You got to do it right. It's you did it right, but you didn't emphasize that. Luckily, (laughs) try one more time, John. Just one more time. Luckily, no one's dying. Oh, you say that with such authority. It's just, we're just, we're so blessed that even though the exponential increase, we're all getting it. Luckily, luckily, no one's dying. I had a thought, because now Canada is going to kill its mink, I guess. I don't know if they're gonna, what they're going to do. I had a thought about this. Quick report, and I just want to discuss kill this. Kill the mink. Yeah, kill the mink. We've had one new community outbreak at a mink farm in the Fraser Health region. And, of course, we are paying very close attention to this outbreak in other parts of the world, particularly most recently in, in Denmark and prior to that in the Netherlands and as well in the U.S. We've seen outbreaks on uh, animal farms such as this, particularly mink farms, where there has been transmission from humans to mink and back, um, and where we've seen some mutations of virus in some parts of the world. So it is of great concern for us, and we are working closely with WorkSafe BC to ensure that all of the measures on the farm are being done appropriately, and also with uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, our animal health colleagues, to make sure that the animal security and health is maintained as well. And this is, of course, an an important um, measure that we need to look at holistically and we're involved with both the CFIA mm. and the Public Health Agency in Canada, of Canada to make sure that all of the appropriate measures are taken on this farm and the other farms here in British Columbia. That includes very strict controls under the Animal Health Act here in BC uh, for who and what can come or leave on the farm. So here's the thing that I the thought I had. For a couple months, we had arguments and discussions and experts saying that this thing transferred from a bat to a human, and then it transferred from a pangolin to to a human. Meanwhile, the mink, it's going back and forth the whole time. No one's saying, hey, hey, by the way, maybe someone got it from mink. And why are they killing them? They're not telling us the reason. I don't know anything about the Chinese fur uh, industry. I know they rely on a lot of mink from mainly Denmark, but actually all of our mink are now being killed. The mink farmers in China are having a a great day. But have they been sending mink over to us? I mean, live mink? Why is no one looking into this? This has been the whole thing. How did it transfer from from animal to human? Well, here's here's the report. People are getting sick from mink. That's what she just said. Well, the the argument is that we gave the mink the COVID. They didn't give it to us. So we're helping China? You know, now that you bring in China, if there's China's doing a mink farming operation, and to get the Chinese, to get us to kill all our minks, which is in competition with the Chinese minks, yes, is really a fantastic marketing ploy. (laughs) Yes. Yes, it's it's part of their mink road strategy. <laughs> the mink, the mink, the belt mink, and the road. I don't know. I'm giving there's, that one. A, I'm giving that one to the troll there somewhere. I'd have to I'm giving it. that to Ned. Ned, that was his idea. It was a good one. The mink road, like the Silk Road. The mink road is perfect. Mm, well, we'll this have a mink lot. Thing is, is does need a little investigation. It's very suspicious. Uh, maybe we, well, we do have, I think Dame Jamie, she keeps saying that they're killing them because that's where the, uh, the true vaccine would be. 
in the antibodies they produce. And she's, I think she's does she's in the, works maybe in a lab or something with well that's a crazy animal theory. animal tra- well this is what she kept saying i read her note a few well, maybe a month ago when this when we first started hearing about these minks being called she said that's like with the with the with the smallpox or the you think plague you're just calling them for their juice well it was or not or maybe don't want people to call them for the juice because that would kind of circumvent a rather big business plan wouldn't it if you could just grab oh, some mink, big business. Well, scrape that's their what these pus. really kind of circumvent. <laughs> There's not going to be a lot of mink vaccine guys in the FDA hearing. No, I, I agree with that. But uh, I know we'll be hearing a lot more about China in this show today because they're on deck. China uh, is on deck. And there goes our China support. <laughs> so, so there's this. Uh, the whole what do you mean? What is China support? This is our enemy. Their China support is down. down it's very tubes. down, yes. So they, the Homeland Security under Ron Johnson decided to do a hearing. This is a second of this is a second hearing they've done on why aren't we working with the drugs we have out there? And yes, the historical drugs, the historical drugs that therapeutics, that, yeah. therapeutics is taking a backseat to the overpriced vaccines. Yes. And so, so he's having these hearings, and he's bringing in these high, you know, these guys that are pretty much have to be determined to be superstars in medicine. And they bring them in, and they talk about you know what's good and what's bad about what's going on. But the Democrats are just fighting. They're being assholes. They're, They're being being really total dicks in. about it. It's been great television. It's it's okay. No, I like. I've been enjoying it. <laughs> I, I like. Well, let's let, let's start start with this last hearing, and I'm going to play two. Clips from Ron Johnson, the the, the Senate uh, head of the committee, and then I want to play. I'm going to play one clip from Gary Peters, who is the uh, ranking member. He's the Democrat throwing a wet blanket on the whole thing, saying these are bunch, this is a bunch of bull crap. And then a guy who comes on, who's the one that everyone's clipped, which yeah, is this yeah. Pierre Corey. Pierre, yeah. And so let's go with uh, Ron Johnson. One. Not only have they shown extraordinary courage. Courage. exposing themselves to the disease. They also have the greatest empathy for patients who experience the fear and loneliness of a COVID diagnosis. These are the medical practitioners, the heroes, that experts in the ivory towers and media have chosen to ignore and vilify. The experts, far outside the circle of empathy, have developed and supported the current NIH guideline of providing no treatment at all until patients are sick enough to require hospitalizations. As we are all aware at that point, treatment is t- often too late. The timing of this, uh, the, this series of hearings, is interesting. After the election, just before the vaccine, I mean, is this, do you think this is like a Hail Mary from the medical community? Uh, I don't know what, the, now that you bring that up. Uh, it's pretty suspicious. Yeah, because these guys are all saying, "Hey, I, I we can fix a, you." Well, I think somebody, somebody at some levels of elitism, have gotten fed up with the way things are going, mm-hmm. or maybe they're just looking for anything, any excuse not to take the jab. Yeah, that's possible. Anyway, let's continue with Johnson. So here we are again holding a second hearing to obtain and distribute information on what is known about early treatment of COVID. What could possibly be controversial about that? Yet some are calling this hearing dangerous. And instead of waiting until after the hearing to trash this information and our witnesses, the New York Times and other publications have already run preemptive attacks, implying implying this hearing is anti-vaccine. Ah, it just hit me. I got it. This is part of the fourth act. This is part of showing the American people, or the ones who watch C-SPAN, which is pretty much nobody, although there were some good clips, that the medical community is also corrupt And uh, I'm sure somehow we'll be able to point to China. So let me be clear. This hearing, like the first hearing, is focused on early treatment of COVID. It is not about vaccines. End of story. In my opinion, discouraging and in some cases prohibiting the research and use of drugs that have been safely used for decades has cost tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people their lives. 
By the time any vaccine is fully deployed, no matter how successful, how effective, how safe, millions more will become infected. With effective early treatment, fewer people will get seriously ill and fewer people will die. So why not give early sh- treatment a shot? No. What have we got <laughs> why to <not>? lose? <laughs> and finally, why is there such a converted, concerted effort to silence the voices of courageous health professionals promoting early treatment? It makes no sense. Let me make just a final point. At the beginning of this an- epidemic, when I first heard about the potential of hydroxychloroquine, it intrigued me because, to me, a drug like that that's been around for 65 years, shown to be safe, it's cheap, billions of tablets are produced every year, we could have ramped up production. If, if that could be proven to be effective, wouldn't that be the dream solution? Why didn't we pursue that in ivermectin? And famipiravir, why didn't, why didn't we look at these drugs that were already there, generic, cheap, mass producible? Again, it makes no sense. Okay, now I'm convinced. I'm glad you made these clips. I had not heard Ron Johnson. Everything he's saying is leading, to me, leading up to, they're pushing these vaccines on you. You may want to figure out why. China, that's what's probably going on here. Well, I think he actually, you missed the point. He makes his own point. Why are they not doing this? And he keeps saying the same word. He said it three times, cheap. These drugs are cheap. Why aren't we using them? Okay. I mean, it's, it's, a, part of, it's a part of the same problem. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah, that's, that's and a good the, point. And the New York Times comes out with a preemptive strike against the committee. Yeah. The New York Times, you know, this is a pharma, big pharma. These guys are, are dangerous. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so we got that guy. So we have the Democrats are all all with, and Big Pharma, by the way, is, they're the ones who put Obama in, in I, office. I saw, and I don't have it, I saw uh, two days ago on television an ad for Pharma. It was just a straight up Pharma is good. I wish I had had it. The, ph- the pharmaceutical good. industry of America is running ads for themselves pharma we bring good things to life someone find that trolls i'm sure you can find that for me so yeah th- this is pharma making it uh, cost effective the question is for who well the point is is that you know they were glad to get big pharma so once and there's d- documentation for this they weren't going to even mention the vaccine until after the election that they had it ready to go because they, big pharma of all groups, wanted Trump out more than anyone, mm-hmm. and so it's possible that to answer the question of why they're doing these things now, this could be the Republicans' last stand against big pharma, because it's real obvious in this hearing that it's Democrats versus Republicans, and the, the Democrats. What science to- and and medicine is politicized? You'd never know it, <laughs> especially when you listen to Gary Peters. Who is the, and this is a clip that's, uh, it's only a minute clip, but this is the guy who's the ranking member. He's the Democrat. And he, and I didn't get too many more clips. I didn't get any more clips of him, but he comes back after every one of these guys testifies and bitches about it. But here's here he is at the beginning. It's taken the lives of nearly 284,000 Americans. Over 2,200 Americans are dying every day from this deadly virus. And thanks to the tireless work of our public health agencies, the private sector, and our scientific and medical communities, we've made progress in treating this disease. The Food and Drug Administration continues to use scientific standards to authorize innovative and effective early treatments. Unfortunately, today's discussion will not meet those same standards. Mr. Chairman, I certainly share your goal of ensuring patients across the country have access to early and effective treatments for coronavirus. But those statements must be based on evidence and not on politics. The American people are looking to Congress for accurate information, for leadership, and for relief. Last month, this committee held a hearing that was billed as a review of early outpatient treatments for coronavirus. Unfortunately, uh, that hearing amplified 
unverified theories about treatments that are not supported by the scientific community. Ah, yes, the community. Hold on, John, I think I have it. America's biopharmaceutical companies have one very important thing in common. A common enemy. We're making great progress because we're collaborating in ways that we've never... Oh, okay, so that's not doing very well. It's a crappy-ass commercial. Never mind. But it is anyway, there. so yeah, uh, so he makes this, and he goes on with the science jab, you know, science, 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 you know, as though the Democrats are science and the Republicans don't believe in science. This really is annoying and mm-hmm. it's continuing. And half of these guys don't have a scientific background. They don't know anything about science themselves. They just like saying that. But he basically says everything thing you're about to hear in this hearing is a bunch of quacks. And so they come up, and they do, there's a bunch of guys, and they're all heavy hitters. We're not talking about any lightweights. And so when Pierre Corey comes out, and he's got the uh, ivermectin uh, yeah, pitch. That's, that's, a, that's a steroid, I think? No, no, no. ivermectin is a, is a horse wormer. A horse wormer? To deworm your horse? And dogs. Are people, too? N- well, it turns worm. out, hmm. not that she's got worms, but this is an all-purpose drug that has been around since, 19, I think, 1972, if I recall. Huh. And my wife uses it. For, she has worms? It is a, as, a, as an ointment, it's a curative for rosacea. Oh. Is that, on, is that so off you, book you for rosacea? Out, you put, ros, you know what, ros, you, rosacea is the... Um, that condition a lot of women get it after especially after giving birth yeah they, they have where a, they, they get red red blotchy spots can be red blotchy faces yeah. and this i think there's huge drug ads for some other oter them otesla there must be a million different drugs for there's this. a few yeah yeah so of course this is this is some kind of wonder drug we can't certainly can't let them be weaseling in on any of that action either no Hmm. So you can, and anyone who has rosacea should uh, talk to their dermatologist about using this. Although, don't buy from the dermatologist; get it from a vet. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> baby was talking de- about this <laughs> yesterday. Can deworm your your apparently, dog as well. <laughs> apparently, you can buy the same, basically, a tube of rose, of this of this uh, ivermectin uh, ointment, not the pills. The pills are for the other things, but. It's an amazing product, but the, you can buy the tube for like ten, twenty bucks from a vet. It's 500 bucks from a dermatologist. The more you know in the morning. A handy <laughs> tip from your No Agenda show right there. That handy could save tips. you a lot of dough right there. We got a lot of tips. So, and a lot of people have rosacea that, uh, and it's really, it becomes, it creates, it really makes you look like W.C. Fields after a while. He had rosacea. <laughs> it, yes. And you know, you get that. It's, that it's red nose. Like you've been lumpy. drinking. Like you've been drinking. Yeah, it makes you look like an old drunk. Mm-hmm. All right, so Pierre Corey comes out, and he's immediately irked by by this Peters character. And by the way, Peters was masked up. Everybody, you know, all the, it was the same thing. All the Democrats in this committee, everyone's separated by a mile. Nobody's near each other. Mm-hmm. But all the Democrats who were social, you know, they had the mask on, a big black mask, and the, and the Republicans didn't. But there no one. It wasn't. It was social distance. I, it, the whole thing was just political. It's it's. What? It's embarrassing. What? Watch, There's theater but... going on there? I'm shocked. So Peters is wearing his mask trying to... <laughs> Meanwhile, Corey comes on, and he's irked about Peters. And here we go. This is hearing. This is Corey. Got a three-parter. Uh, this is clip one. I just want to start out. I didn't think I'd have to say this, but I want to register my offense at the ranking member's opening statement. I was discredited as a politician. I am a physician and a man of science. I have done nothing, nothing but commit myself to scientific truth and the care of patients. But this setup was, did he call, was he called a politician? Is that what, what the, someone said on the panel if you listen to peter's comments carefully he said that all these people are just political stooges coming on to promote this and that and and to hear that i'm here because of a political angle i am not a politician i'm a physician i want to start out by saying that i'm not speaking as an individual, I'm speaking on behalf of the organization that I'm a part of. We are a group of some of the most highly 
published physicians in the world. We have near 2,000 peer-reviewed publications among us. Led by Dr. Prof uh, Professor Paul Marek, who is our intellectual leader, we came together early on in the pandemic, and all we have sought is to review the world's literature on every facet of this disease, trying to develop effective protocols. You just mentioned that I was here in May, and I touted, I wouldn't say touted, I recommended that it was critical that we use corticosteroids in this disease, when all of the national and international healthcare organizations said we cannot use those. That turned out to be a life-saving recommendation. I am here again today with a new recommendation. In the last nine months, in our review of all of the literature as a group, <clears throat> Again, we are some of the most highly published physicians in our specialty and the world. We have done nothing but try to figure out how to identify a repurposed and available drug to treat this illness. We have now come to the conclusion, after nine months, and I have to point out, I am severely troubled by the fact that the NIH, the FDA, and the CDC, I do not know of any task force that was assigned or compiled to review repurposed drugs in an attempt to treat this disease. Everything has been about novel and or expensive pharmaceutically engineered drugs. <laughs> Ooh, he's touching the third rail. Very, very good. Yeah. Quack. So all about the... Oh, now he's a quack. Yes, of course. Quack. I like it because he's, he's a, he, this whole hearing and he is approaching it so far from the angle that you, that you stated, which is, this is, is, is all these, that's too cheap. We can't have that. We can't have hydroxychloroquine. We can't have any of these things. New, expensive stuff. New is better. I think this is part of the exposure, John. Because this trial, why now? It's all part of it. It's all happening. And we're following along diligently. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we are. We we're are playing a little. We're doing our part. Yeah, this is good. Well, no one else is playing this, so <laughs> might as well. That's true. Let's go to part two. Everything has been about novel and or expensive pharmaceutically engineered drugs. Things like tocilizumab and rendesivir and monoclonal antibodies and vaccines. We have 100 years of medicine development. We know we are expert in all the medicines we use, and I do not know of a task force that has been focused on repurposed drugs. I will tell you that my group and our organization, I will say that we have filled that void. We, that is all we have done is focus on the things we know and things we do. And I'm here to tell you, Dr. Ryder, he just presented. It was one, he has one study of the many that I want to talk about. And I want to talk about that we have a solution to this crisis. There is a drug that is proving to be of miraculous impact. And when I say miracle, I do not use that term lightly. And I don't want to be sensationalized when I say that. That is a scientific recommendation based on mountains of data that has emerged in the last three months. When I am told, and I just had to hear this in the opening sentence, that we are touting things that are not FDA or NIH recommended, let me be clear. The NIH, their recommendation on Evermectin, which is to not use it outside of controlled trials, is from August 27th. We are now in December. This is three to four months later. Mountains of data have emerged from all, from many centers and countries around the world showing the miraculous effectiveness of ivermectin. It basically obliterates transmission of this virus. If you take it, you will not get sick. Oh man, now there's a quotable. That, that's a great soundbite. I'm sure they put that on uh, CNN and uh, and NBC uh -huh. Evening News. That this is that we have that doctor just said, if you take this, it's going to be fine. Yeah. No. Wrong. Okay. No. Now I want to mention something. The um, in the newsletter I had because I was looking into this too, and uh, I could have just asked Mimi. I would have gotten ahead of the game. But I did find an old, uh, not that old, but from June of this year in, in Elsevier's uh, medical journals, uh, a report showing that in vitro, in other words, in the lab, mm -hmm. ivermectin uh, killed all coronaviruses, including, <laughs> including the, the COVID-19. Huh. And it was this was in June, and this was, I'm sure there's other reports earlier in the year. So nobody, so people, they just know. No one wants to pay any attention to this sort of thing. They who, wanna... um, 
Who manufactures ivermectin? I don't know. It's like it's it's got one brand name called Solar In or something. I can't remember the name of the brand name. Oh, it's, I'm sure it's generic. It's a generic yeah, drug. Generic. It's been yeah, around it forever. Be. Yeah. Mm. And so I, you know, you can buy them by the generic company and jack up the price. But it also uh, works for head lice. Yeah. River Scabbies. blindness. Yeah. Scabbies. Yeah. River blindness. <laughs> What is? I don't know what it is. I don't want to screwball drugs like aspirin, <laughs> and it prevents and treats heartworm. Oh yeah, this is good. Pinworms. Oh, it's ma- it's a magical thing. Rosacea. There it is. That's your huh? Okay. Cost. Initial price. Oh, Merck. Merck made it in eighty seven, and its price back then was six dollars. <laughs> <laughs> $6. Little did they this know. This can't be good. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> this is six. Well, that's the problem right there. Now we and this is being called out properly by Pierre. Can we go to number three? Yes, please. I want to briefly summarize the data. My manuscript, again, published by some of the the, the, the most con- we have contributed more to the medical knowledge of our specialty in our careers than, than anyone else can claim as a group. And our manuscript, which was posted on Medicine Preprint Server, details all of this evidence. I want to briefly summarize it. Number one, we have evidence that ivermectin is effective not only in prophylaxis, in the prevention. If you take it, you will not get sick. We just came across a trial last night from Argentina by the lead investigator of ivermectin in Argentina, Dr. Hector Carvalho. They prophylaxed 800 healthcare workers. Not one got sick. In the 400 that they didn't prophylax with ivermectin, 58% got sick. 237 of those 400 got sick. If you take it, you will not get sick. It has immense and potent antiviral activity. We know that from the first study in Monash, it has made the bench to the bedside. Prophylaxis, we now have four large randomized controlled trials totaling over 1,500 patients, each trial showing that as a prophylaxis agent, it is immensely effective. You will not get sick. You will be protected from getting ill if you take it. Well, that's pretty clear and sounds like darn good advice. I could probably... And you won't get worms. <laughs> and I could probably have my doctor prescribe that to me through a telemedicine appointment, don't you think? Doc, yeah, I, I think got the COVID. Could. Doc, I got the COVIDs. I don't know. I'm worried. Uh, prescribe me some ivermectin. And I would mention this, that that, that any clips from this, mm-hmm. uh, they were put on Facebook and taken off. Of course. This, all right. There is a concerted effort, in my opinion, and remember, I'm a conspiracy therapist, a concerted effort to show people the corruption that has been taking place uh, for, well, as long as I've been born, probably, but for decades, and certainly uh, in the past 10 years, and I think specifically in the past four, and a lot of this is pointing back to uh, China. Uh, there's been an incredible boost in China talk, uh, not just in alternative media, but in uh, mainstream. And Tucker Carlson is doing his job. Now, as you know, we, we kind of don't like Tucker clips here, so I've cut him out everywhere. But well, he, before you go to Tucker, let's play this last clip from the hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, I didn't realize which, you had one more. Okay. Which was a Stanford professor who was, there was a lot of people tele, you know, telecommuting into this thing. And I just thought this, I, there was a lot of other stuff I could have clipped, but I thought I'd clip this was a little bit about the stay-at-home orders because you brought that up earlier in the show, and I thought we should play this clip. I, I want to ask you about some of the points that you made in your written testimony, uh, which I thought were quite striking, uh, about the challenges of mitigation strategies, particularly mitigation strategies that involve lockdowns, full lockdowns, which, of course, we experienced in virtually every part of the country, certainly my home state, earlier this year, and that many have been advocating as a mitigation strategy again now. Uh, You write about uh, the data uh, that uh, uh, the the consequences of social isolation uh, and deteriorating
deteriorating mental health that is associated with these lockdowns. I was particularly struck by the CDC data that you cite that says, let me get this right, that one in four young adults seriously considered suicide this past June when much of the country was locked down. That's a really stunning number. And these impacts that you talk about in your testimony are really stunning. So can you speak to the challenges that maybe young people in particular, but but all Americans face from lockdowns as a mitigation strategy? I, mean, I, I think I think lockdowns as a mitigation strategy are a failure of, of ima- policy imagination, and they have been had absolutely devastating effects. Uh, humans are not meant to live in isolation, and that's that's the main focus of the lockdown strategies. Um, now, I think there are some folks who are at high risk from this disease, as, as I said, older people, so people with chronic conditions. Uh, and so, for instance, 40% of deaths have happened in nursing homes. There, we actually do need to do some sort of isolation, but we have to be careful there as well. Uh, 20, there's been a 20% increase in dementia-related deaths in nursing homes, apart from COVID. There's a, the, the, key, the, the key failure, I think, is a failure of public health to recognize that there's dangers other than COVID. Well, public health, our public health services have just done us huge disservices. They've, they have, I think, killed more people than was necessary because of this, these decisions. Yeah, they've done a very, I would say the public health departments around this country, around and the world, the public health experts are, are completely incompetent boneheads. You know, I've always suspected this a little bit because when I was an air pollution inspector back in the day when I was a kid, we worked with, with the health department guys all the time. And it, there were, they have a certain kind of a weirdness to them. There, there were screwballs then, but I didn't realize how bad it is with them. I mean, these guys are, are just, they're not, I don't know. A lot of people just accuse them of being just lousy bureaucrats that got a little power and they've got, it's gone to their heads, but it's, it has not worked out. No, it's a much, I think it's much more systemic. And again, I'm just seeing this all in the, in the purview of, uh, Everything's going to be China's fault. I've said, I think I said it in February or March. The end game of this will be, true or not, it's going to be China released this on purpose or they didn't tell us on purpose. I, I actually am now pretty sure that this was purposely done and it was done to undermine uh, uh, Trump's economy, etc. Uh, it was done with the help of every single corrupted organization in the united states and for the past months we have looked at where the and i'm just gonna i want to say chinese i mean chinese communist party chinese in our in our pharmaceutical everywhere all rampant they're running the show the who all the way to johns hopkins everything is run by chinese that's all their money and the politicians were getting to that and now the vaccine, if I'm not mistaken, the genome was decoded and published by the Chinese. The, a lot of the assays, the primers come from China. This is not being discussed very openly, but there's a lot of China fingerprints over all across all of this. And now we have this incessant rush, this push to overlook any other strategies or therapeutics that apparently, there's our favorite word, work. Uh, it's being said by professionals and there's data and science to back it up, but we've been pushed and we've been bullied by the Chinese controlled mainstream media and the Chinese, uh, for some reason, they have a lot of control over the social media. Why else would this be deleted off of Facebook? It's, it's, it's on C-SPAN. No, because we can't have people watching it and catching on. And now... We have many people out spreading the bad word about China. It's ramping up and it's intentional. And the whole voter fraud and all the corruption is all going to be exposed. Whether it works or not, we'll see. But it's all going to be shown to be China. To be China. And, and for me, this was solidified by two things that happened this past week. One was the director of national intelligence, Ratcliffe, doing the rounds. Now, people are coming out. All of a sudden, here they are. Now they're on television. First, it was with the money, honey, on Sunday Morning Futures. Meh. Okay, there's more people that listen to this show in 10 minutes than watch the entire week of Fox Business. But then he went on Tucker, and he wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, which he said 
He wanted to do so he could get this information declassified and talk about it openly. And this was specifically about the Chinese and what they're doing. And I think, in a way, how it may pertain to these um, newfangled mRNA mRNA, mRNA vaccines, which, and I'm not going to argue with anybody about whether they alter your DNA or not, it's giving instructions to your DNA to do something. That is a form of gene modification. And China has been thinking about this for a long time, and for some reason, the United States Director of National Intelligence brought this up. There are a lot of people who, for economic reasons, don't want China to be our greatest threat. There are a lot of people who, for political reasons, don't want China to be our greatest threat in America. But the intelligence doesn't lie. China is our greatest threat, and it's not even close. No other country has the capability of essentially taking away the American dream and a specific plan to do so. And the intelligence is clear. So, you know, as the director of national intelligence. My job is to warn the American people of threats, and there is no greater threat than China to America. On the military front, they've already achieved having the largest uh, navy of any country in the world. Um, from a military force standpoint, there are the People's Republic of China has a military of two million. Um, they want them to be the largest, and they also want them to be the strongest, which is why they're engaged in what you reference, which is called gene editing, literally trying to alter the DNA, experimenting on on, uh, DNA to make uh, soldiers, sailors, and airmen uh, stronger and more powerful. <laughs> now, uh, I'm sure every country is working on creating superhumans. I'm sure Elon Musk is doing that right now in his brand new $100 million Austin home. But if you've got a, a group of people who are working on changing humans with DNA and making them stronger, or perhaps making them weak and susceptible to death, then maybe you'd want to try an mRNA vaccine that may or may not have their fingerprints all over it. I don't know. But they are an element of the uh, development of that vaccine. Yes. So We've talked about it before. It's one specific Chinese uh, drug company. They never talk about them. They don't add them to the list. So why is the director of national intelligence bringing this up, which almost sounds like science fiction. But it sounds it, like a cheap Hollywood movie. <laughs> be rejected if we if we wrote that script dana give it a shot and he continued about the chinese plan for world domination china knows at this point that the united states is still the world's superpower they know they're catching us in all of those respects um they're banking on the fact that um, we're not going to do anything until um, they're superior in all those respects. You know, great generals always say it's better to fight downhill. Right now, the United States um, can fight downhill um, uh, against China. We don't ever want to be in a position where we're looking up at China and all of the plans that they have, all of the initiatives made in China, the Digital Silk Road, uh, Belt and Road Initiative, those are all thin veneers and, and facades for which China is going around the world um, and essentially gaining the uh, influence power uh, to become the world's superpower and supplant the United States in that role. One of the ways that China has made their way to the top is they understand that information is the key to their dominance. So they're going to get there any way they possibly can. That's what uh, subsidizing Huawei and ZTE is all about. Yeah. Those are Chinese co companies that are run by the Chinese government. They know that they can steal more information if they run the telecommunications networks over which our information travels. That's one of the ways that China um, has gotten so good in terms of getting into um, our networks and into our information society. The message is clear, and there's a lot of people out there doing this. And the next thing that happened, which could, have not, could not have happened to a nicer human being, was the news that uh, U.S. Representative Eric Swalwell <laughs> has been compromised by a Chinese honey trap spy who was blowing mayors and governors all across America, got to him, and he completely fell for it. Now, this would be a good story in general, but it was the story was broken by Axios. And Axios, by no reason, is, are they going to do anything against the Democrat Party. I think they're, they're partially owned by NBC. Uh, Lorraine Jobs. And, oh, 
Is she is she a owner of uh, Axios? She's one. I think she's a partner. <coughs> I'd have to look into it, but I'm pretty sure she's a partner. So it's not necessarily something that would be negative uh, towards the Democratic no, it's Party. It's a Democrat operative operation. So why? So they're, what they're doing with Swalwell is getting ahead of it. I think yes, they're getting ahead of it, and they. I believe he's being sacrificed because there's a lot more coming out, but he's the first one, and they had to break it real quick. And it was funny how this uh, Brett Bear was, uh, he's on Fox News, has that afternoon news show, which almost does news. And he had this Jonathan, the Brit from Axios, who broke the story. And to me, I'm just listening, go like, yeah, no, this is exactly what happened. Have a listen to this. So let's just start there. Axios broke this story, uh, Jonathan, with the exclusive suspected Chinese spy targeted California Democrats. And part of Swalwell... Oh, and I want to mention, it's become increasingly difficult when I see something. This is why it sounds like crap, because I had to do this air bridge recording and I tried to filter it. Increasingly difficult to find anything on YouTube. When you when you're looking for a good video, a good little piece that was, oh man, this is great for the show. You can't find it anymore on YouTube. This is the downside for the show of what's going on. Let's just start there. Axios broke this story, uh, Jonathan, with the exclusive suspected Chinese spy targeted California Democrats. And part of Swalwell's defense has been uh, that he says it leaked by the Trump, the, either the president or his allies. Uh, it's just it's interesting that that's the pushback here uh, to this story. It's, it's happening after the election. I mean, it's risible. I mean, I'll, It'd be inappropriate for me to talk about my colleagues sourcing, but just use your common sense. Um, even Swallow acknowledges that um, he first found out Axios was on this in 2019. My, I know my colleague, his timeline's wrong. He says July 2019. It's not July, but she's been working on this for more than a year. So just anyone who has any passing uh, understanding of how Trump world works, do we really think that they put out some opposition research and then patiently wait a year beyond an, an election for, for the for the very well respected China correspondent to to report it out in a nuanced fashion. I mean, give me a break. Yeah, okay, when I heard him say that, like, why is he protesting that so loudly? I think that's exactly what happened. I think this was meant to break now. Well, it was never meant to break, but it was meant to break now. I think they certainly knew it was going on. Uh, this was known for several years. From all reports, yeah, I think I, now whether uh, the Trump administration or someone leaked this and it made that happen, no. But they forced someone's hand, and that's why. And that's why he has such a big 30, 30 seconds. Like, oh, this is crazy! No, 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 we're real journalists over here. No, nothing to see. No, it's just we're good journalism. We were just ready now. Bull crap. It's completely absurd. The story is really important. It shows how the Chinese Communist Party operates inside this country. It shows how they infiltrate uh, local politics, how they identify young, uh, in some cases, soft targets, people who don't have uh, a lot of staff around them, who don't have experience, who don't actually understand the tactics of the Chinese Communist Party. And then they follow them up. And they follow them in some cases. In Eric Swalwell's case, he has become a very, very powerful and important member of Congress with access to the nation's top secrets. So it's a very important story just to understand how China is operating. And as you showed in that interview right now in this country. I love this. I love this is happening to Swalwell. This is this is just gleeful, gleeful. <laughs> and, and and yes, because he's 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 got that look of a dick. <laughs> yes, he does. And he just deserved this. And. <laughs> He was one and he's of always all oh, bitching and moaning about Trump and you know the rest exactly. of it. Exactly. What you say, bring yourself, make your cop door to health. While he was out there yammering and stammering and going on about Trump being a Russian agent. Literally, he said he was a Russian agent. You know, Trump has said, when people hit me, it may take a while, but I'll hit them back. And Swalwell is getting the full load. He's already been taken off the um the Intelligence Committee, Hup, gone. The Off. fact that he was on the Intelligence Committee was a screw-up. Ah, and this is where, one hour later, on the Hannity Show, we have Grinnell, who, who just until just recently was the acting uh, director of national intelligence. 
and he took it uh, one step further. Eric Swalwell did exactly what the Chinese wanted. We need to figure out, are there others? And I can tell you without giving away too much intelligence, this is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the leverage that China is putting on our politicians. There's many, many more. Uh, wouldn't the Bidens be up there in that category? There's a variety of mayors, governors, <laughs> senior people. Look, wow. the other thing that, that we've got to point whoa. to is, is that Eric Swalwell said... I can't let you said, gloss over that. Mayors, governors, senior officials, what? There's a whole bunch, Sean, and more should uh, be coming out. They've all received defensive briefings, and there's a lot more to it. This is the tip of the iceberg. Did I see Matt Gate, Gates blushing there? That would be impossible. I mean, <laughs> listen, Matt, I want to know what Pelosi knew, Sean. It's very important to know what Pelosi knew and when she knew it. Everybody in Washington knows Swalwell is Pelosi's fair-haired boy. She is his top political ally. I'm guessing she knew more about this than we might originally suspect. He said leadership knew. He said leadership knew about this. Ah, there it is. There it is. He said, and did you hear Rick Grinnell? He, he almost pulled a gay card on that. He said leadership knew. He was trying to get it in before the break. Good <laughs> job, Rick. Good job. Very good. Here's um, the House Minority Leader. Uh, that means he's a Republican. And this is Kevin McCarthy. And he is totally picking up the ball and tying Swalwell to Pelosi and the Chiners. This is only the tip of the iceberg. Because remember what we're hearing. Notice, tip of the iceberg. This is the yes, talking that, points. Yes, they're this talking, is, point. talking points. This is only the tip of the iceberg. Because remember what we're hearing. These are Chinese spies that go down to the level of a mayor. They, they court and help a city council member become a congressman. This congressman now gets on the Intel Committee. They are only selected from the Intel Committee by the leaders of their party, meaning Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is one of the Gang of Eight, along with myself. Did Nancy Pelosi know this had transpired when she put him on the committee? Why is he still on the Intel Committee, let known why is he still a member of Congress? Congress. Yeah, well, the Intel Committee is over, and I know Pelosi was asked this morning, and uh, I'm not sure uh, what her answer was. We will find out. But this is leading back, to, and it's fun to see that Swalwell was uh, Pelosi's fair-haired boy who went from a councilman and shot to fame as a as a representative. Very similar to Anthony Weiner being a councilman and the fair-haired boy for Chuck Schumer who shot to fame, and then all of a sudden is in all kinds of trouble. Uh, so it's these young'uns who certainly don't know how to play the game anymore. And as we're being blanketed by anti-China rhetoric, and in many cases facts, the good stuff is, of course, to be found on Steve Bannon's war room. <laughs> because that's where the funniest people show up. And Darren Beatty of Revolver... I think Revolver is reasonably well respected. Do you read Revolver? The, uh... I don't even know it. Oh, it's it's been called kind of the new Drudge. Not that it's that Drudge wasn't really journalistic. They got a lot of people no, over there, the... and it's it's a right wing, you know, very uh, anti Democrat uh, outfit. Yeah, but they don't are know it. Yeah, okay, so they Revolver. They're they're doing. Uh, they've been doing it for a while. It's a couple, of, and it's non. You know, they're not. It's um. I think it's value for value. I don't think they have ads or anything which uh, is good for them. And so on Sunday... By, by the way, Loren Jobs is Axios. She so. is Axios, yeah. So she's running a protection racket for someone by throwing Swallow under the bus. There's, there's no two way, as you said, getting out in front of the story. And by the way, I can see how a, a young Swallow would look at that uh, Fang Fang, Christina Fong, I believe her name is, and, you know, she's got the red dress. She's <laughs> she's got the hottie. Oh, this is super hottie. I can totally see him falling for that. And he's like, well, I can't say if I had sexual relations with her because that's classified. Yeah, okay. Yeah, classified. 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 <laughs> Thanks. We got <laughs> our answer. Classified. Hey, have Trump declassify it. Yeah, we want pictures. <laughs> uh, so uh, over a week ago, and this was discussed uh, a lot on Fox News, but it was... Uh, sent out widely, I'm sure you can't find it on uh, on the regular social media sites, this professor in China who was on a Chinese television station talking about the upper echelons of America and how China controls it, and it was it really started to suck. It was, been, it was great for decades, but then in 2016, it sucked because Trump 
uh, came in and everything became a problem. Uh, but luckily, Joe Biden's coming in now, so woohoo! And he's not bashful about how China controls the upper echelons of China Joe. It's China Joe, I like that. It's a difference from Bazooka Joe. How China has been running the United States. And they wrote a very good analysis of what's going on. Um, and it made no sense for me to sit here and read the subtitles of this Chinese guy and what he's saying. Many of you have already seen it. If not, it's in the show notes. But I really like Darren Beatty's of Revolver. I like his uh, explanation of who the guy is and what he was said and why. It's a video, as you mentioned, of this Chinese professor, Di Dong Sheng. He's the vice dean of the International Relations School at uh, Renmin University. He holds other positions. He's the vice director and secretary of the Center for Foreign Strategic Studies in China. He has other positions. A very well placed Chinese uh, source told uh, me that he is actually an informal advisor at the highest levels of the Chinese government with a direct line to President Xi. This character is very high up. He's very intelligent, as you can see from these interviews. And actually, his lectures, um, as blunt as they are, reveal a deeper and more sober and accurate understanding of the American power structure than I've ever seen from an American university professor, ironically. And in this video, which is, again, it's remarkable, has all kinds of politically incorrect correct stuff that no, certainly no professor in America would ever uh, get away with saying. But the basic case that he lays out is that China had it so good since the 1970s in terms of compromising the inner power structure of the United States. And the principal vehicle for doing that was one faction of the American power structure, namely Wall Street. And he laments the fact that in 2008, with the financial crisis, the prestige and relative status of Wall Street to other factions of the American ruling class diminished. And then he mentions something uh, terrible happened in 2016 when Donald Trump came into power and he didn't allow Wall Street to be used as this vehicle for selling influence to China. And then, of course, he praises Biden for coming in. Of course, they're a rival. Of course, they're a geopolitical adversary. But if you watch a video, as remarkable and astonishing as it is, and yes, as smug as he is, and your take home is that the Chinese are the villains in this story. You're missing a big point. The villain in this story is not the Chinese guy doing what's best for the Chinese government. The villain in this story is the Wall Street woman who is an American selling out America. And I think that's a very important point. So that ultimately, as much as China's a threat, as much as we need to deal with it, the problem of China is ultimately the problem of America's corrupt, incompetent, dysfunctional, and perhaps even illegitimate ruling class. I think we're getting the message. I do understand what they're trying to do. They probably have uh, about uh, about nine, eight or nine days, as what will be next is the report from in military intelligence about the election, which will put us under some kind of regulation to go and uh, arrest every Chinaman in America. Something like that is happening. And I will link that to the vote and to who will be the next president after I thank you for your courage and say in the morning to you, the man who put the C in exponentially, John C. Dvorak. Yes, uh, in the morning, you, Mr. Adam Curry, in the morning, all ships and sea boots with the ground feet in the air, subs in the morning, all the dames and nights. In there. the morning, trolls, hello in the troll room. Let me give you a little count. Hands up, hands up, one hand, one hand, there we go. In the troll room, okay, beautiful. They were waiting for us. They're ready for it. 3,077 trolls on live. Good to have you all here at noagendastream.com. Yeah, what, 3,077? Well, that's the new record, then. Is it? Is that? Oh, we had 323? Yeah, 330. I'm going to put that down. 307. No, it's always been in the twos. I thought we had one just over three. <laughs> no, never. They're happy. Are you sure you got the right number there? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I got the right number. Hmm. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, wait. Maybe I don't have the right number. Ah. Hey, there's a lot of trolls in there, okay? <laughs> that's all I care about. If you want to be one of them... Be like the trolls. Go to noagendastream.com and um, you can 
check out all the trolling that's happening. It's a chat room, but it's just filled with trolls. But we also have a simultaneous stream of all the cool podcasts that have either, either sprouted out of the No Agenda show or been attracted to it. It's a No Agenda Global Radio, and a lot of the shows are live, which means that you can uh, troll along uh, with the hosts, who uh, sometimes are actually uh, watching what's going on in real time. I think it was more like 1789. I think I must have made a mistake on what I saw. I was way too excited. Sorry. That's a bummer. You were jacked up. I was jacked up. I'm sorry about that. If you're talking to the trolls, ask them for an invite to noagendasocial.com. This is a great uh, a great social network. It does not have algos. It's federated, which means that you can communicate with other groups across what they call the Fediverse, but you can kind of just keep it to yourself. But, uh, you know, people can lurk. You can uh, find uh, stuff that other people... You can do it across groups is uh it's where everywhere everything's headed twitter eventually will have to do this as well and it truly is kind of a family in fact so much so uh that i received a note this morning uh brooks beard papa 82 uh we want to give him uh right off the bat uh, a little bit of emergency health karma uh he posted pray for me guys i'm in the emergency room with an aortic dissection yeah going to the operating room immediately so uh, we're going to give him a little health karma you've got karma it really is a family there it really is a family now uh, let us thank uh the artiste who brought us the artwork for episode 1301 we titled that one bino which is brexit in name only if you're looking at one of the brand new podcasting 2.0 apps which you can find at newpodcastapps.com you will see this artwork right now on your screen darren o'neill brought us a real simple one uh it was he changed his red background to blue it uh, it was a royal blue it drew us in very simple keep calm it's the pfizer countdown which i don't know if everyone got the double the the, the little extra joke about the pfizer countdown i don't know if you even got it john I don't know. I probably didn't. No, it's a takeoff of uh, the song. It's the final countdown. Oh. (laughs) I didn't. No, it's the final countdown. You might remember it that way. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. Maybe not. Uh, Anyway, uh, good to have uh, Darren back with with a nice piece of art. It's overdue. I was wondering, was there anything? There were a lot of bat coin art the, yeah, the one that we I, looked at? I used one for the newsletter from cesium 137 which was the stacked boxes yes that's a beautiful one that's the one i wanted i was pushing for that wasn't i you were kind of pushing for it and i think there was some some better reason to pick the o'neill piece <clears throat> but i ended up using that piece for the newsletter yeah that tricks you and uh <laughs> that's why that you're like good news it's good a newsletter piece. piece i don't it's want i don't want the curry to get a win i don't want him to have a win so it's a go, it's a go, it's just a gorgeous piece of art it it's is. just very it crazy it's, it's very evergreen it didn't really have too much to do with the show it's just an evergreen dynamite piece and shout out to dreb scott who's been doing the community chapters so he's approving them and adding images you can do that if you get i think it's hypercatcher that's only for iOS. You can mark. Uh, you can mark community chapters. He's putting a lot of this art into the timeline. When we're talking about something, then it'll pop some other art up. It's really fun to watch. Huh. And you can now search in the transcript. How about that? Right from the app. Now you're talking. When did the guys talk about that? Ah, you just hit the little search uh, icon and you find it. It's beautiful. NoAgendaArtGenerator.com, that is uh, where the artists, very talented artists from around Gitmo Nation, congregate at least twice a week to compete for the best artwork for, of course, the best podcast in the universe. We appreciate all of the work that they do, and uh, especially Darren, of course, uh, who will receive the uh, who received the credit, and we look forward to what we're going to do today, and thank you all for your courage. And now let's thank some of our Producers, executive producers, and associate executive producers who bring the third T of the time, talents, and treasure. And uh, we kick it off with, uh, do we have a note from our Keith here? Yes, I do. I have a note from Keith Sarlus. Oh, good. And uh, it's interesting. He says, I've been listening since show one. Sorry about that. Recently, I've been listening to a lot of wine talk on the show and wanted to hear, 
wanted to hair h a r e my some of my talent and treasure with you. Mm-hmm. I own a couple of vineyards. This is this is all paying off. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> good. I should mention, by the way, that uh, the the reason we went to that other uh, the Verite is because Amy Eckhouse's husband works at Donnellan Winery in Napa, and she dropped off a bottle of very tasty Syrah. We, we did have it. It was quite good. Oh. Uh, Donnellan Family Vineyards. Apparently, the owner or one of the owners or the winemaker at Donnellan was a huge No Agenda fan, told him about it. He started listening, told her about it. No way. She started listening. Wow. Yeah. Word of mouth. This is this what happened before advertising. Uh, <laughs> commercials. No, before commercials. That's the joke. I have been listening since show one. I own a couple of vineyards in Los Olivos, California, and I have been producing wines since 2003. The name of my family business is Sarlos and Sons. Yes, oh. a Dutch winemaker. Oh, it would be Sarlos. But yeah. Sarlos. Yeah. Oh, nice. We are 100% estate winery, but that that still farms everything ourselves, still picks every single grape ourselves. Here's a grape. Makes our wine ourselves, and I even design all of the labels. Okay. We design a couple of, uh, yeah, couple so, of show arts for us. Or maybe, we do not sell in any stores and sell quite quickly. I sell out quite quickly every year selling direct. Hold on, hold on, John. Wrong, 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 way, wrong way around. Wrong way around. He needs to take some of the Noah agenda art and put it on their label. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> How about that? We've had our uh, thirty-three beer, our in Gitmo Nation. Yeah, in the we had thirty-three. Beer. Yeah, we had the Australian guy. That was some good stuff. Too. I haven't heard from them. Well, they probably got. I think we down. said something bad about Australia. That no, was the end. Of it. I don't think so. Well, they're New Zealanders. Never, maybe. Oh well, well that's, there you go. Huh? <laughs> We're yeah. from Plow to Your Porch. Okay, well, people should look it up then. Uh, I, there's a lot of wineries that can pull this off. You have to have really good bo- wine. I would like to say thank you for your time and to share with us over the many years. I'd also like to share my wines with each of you and, this, and the No Agenda family. Uh, he's going to put us on the allocation. We'll get a couple of bottles. Um, but as you say, value for value, I and I value you, and I'd like to treat John to wines made by... Okay, he's going to plug... I'm not going to go on and on with this, how great his wines are, but they're probably really good. I, I'll taste them. And we'll let you know. Um, I don't know if this barter puts me in up for a knighthood, but if it does, I'd like to be known as, well, not yet. Not yet. He has to but keep we, track we, of you that. Do, you are credited with the executive producership. Absolutely. And it's Sar Luce and Sons. People should probably get on their S-E-S-A-R-R-L-O-O-S and Sons.com. Uh, get yourself on the mailing list. Get yeah. Some, get some. Nice quality that, wine. Thank you, Keith. It's very, does he want any jingles or anything? Wine down there. Does he want any kind of uh, sounds? No, he didn't ask for anything other than his plug for his winery. Okay, good, good to go. Huh. He does his wines expensive, so it's possible we can, if we both get some bottles, we can probably make it make it happen. Uh, Sir Nell Niels Den Olinjek. Oh, oh he, that's a good one. I'll never get this one. But he, Niels <laughs> Den Olinjek in Breda, he, in the Netherlands. He, uh, he actually said it was okay for me to read this in Dutch English. I should mention, this is weird. We get two Dutch guys uh, in a row. So his real name is Sir Niels Den Olinjek. And yeah. Olinjek is Dutch for oil shake. Oil shake? Yeah, chic. You know, chic. Uh, an oh, oil, oil, chic. oil chic. Oh, you yes. mean like a, a rich guy, a Saudi yeah, yeah. prince. Yeah, one of those dudes, right. Yeah. And he's, and, he, and I'm going to read this uh, as he requested. Uh, in the morning, Adam and Shom, congrats on your 1300 show Saturday. Very good. It's my 34th birthday. Last year it was on a show day, but I screwed up and donated too late. Today, my 333 donation will make me a knight. And while still 33 years young, isn't that great? At least if Adam is willing to chip in the final penny. Yes, I got you with your cent here, man. I found out about the No Agenda show just after Aero Classic Rock in the Netherlands was terminated, remember? And of course, I listened to the backlog of shows. You are the best. Looking forward to a Lowlands meetup with the other producers. When the, when the globalist ad- agenda accelerated by COVID, my fantasy of moving to a free place like Texas is getting stronger. 
You might want to hurry up. We're closing it soon. Uh, this, we're closing. <laughs> we're closing it up. This year, they even cancelled the old fun tradition of playing with fireworks during New Year's Eve. Oh my goodness, Adam. Do you have advice for Euro slaves that love good old American freedom? Uh, dropping an anchor baby on Texas soil, perhaps? <laughs> Haha, <laughs> just kidding about the baby. Can I have some combined karma for baby making with my sizzling hot wife, Dr. Keo, my dad who is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease? Uh, please play uh, Donate to Be a Knight, uh, FDEU, Donald Loves Nazis, Obama Long Legged Mac Daddy. At the round table, I would like some Schulten Brau and Nederwiet. Nederwiet is uh, Dutch homegrown weed. Thank you, thank you for your courage. Kind regards from Breda in the great Burgundic state of Brabant, Sir Niels Den Oli Shaik. Thank you so much. While I'm driving off laughing, this is what I'll say. <laughs> Donald loves Nazis. Donald loves Nazis. CNN say that he's KKK and he shouts Sig Hale with it. Wow. The long leg magnet! You've got <laughs> Karma. All right. Let me just make sure. And he's uh, on the list. I think he's our only uh, knighting today, I believe. Ooh. Yeah, just one. You, you can read the next note too since it actually, scrolls off the page. Oh, actually, he's he's not on the list at all. How does that work? No, he, well, he is now. Hmm. Yes, he is now. Hold on a second. Let me just put that in. That's odd. Okay. The next one. Well, he says, donate. Well, hold on a second. My dad, can you play some of the, the jingles? Donate enough to be a knight someday. No, no, no. He wants that jingle, which I didn't have. Oh, okay. But he, no, right. he even asked for stuff at the round table. So, I don't know. I, he's on yes. because I'm. I, we, we got a black knighting today. Don't need two next week. Is, you sure, is that black knighting? Is that one hundred? One hundred percent. One hundred percent sure. Yes, I checked it. All right. Yep. All right. Gabe. Take the next one, please. Oh, because it's long. Thanks. All right. Well, I can do it. I mean, I just have to. No, I got it, it, sir. So Bob, Do- I got it. I got it. No, I got it. Bob Dolan, okay. Sir Net Ned, and. He's 33333 from Shelby Township, Michigan. Today, while contemplating making a donation, I noticed an email from my boss that was sent at 333. It was about some job files that contained a 33 in the file names as well. I noticed this all at 4.20 p.m. I thought, is Adam trying to telepathically talk to me with the power of weed? I knew it was a sign and I could always use some karma with the holiday season upon us. It just so happens I have some extra cash because my wonderful governor, Gretchen Big Wretch Whitmer, has us in step five or something in her however many step plan to save womankind or whatever it is, which means no restaurants, which has put extra money in my pocket. She is so steadfastly set on accomplishing that goal that she decided to be the party planner for creepy Uncle Joe's crazy inauguration wingding. I think the southern phrase of bless her heart is very fitting for her and much better than the names I normally call her. Is that true? Is she she, uh, part of the inauguration committee? I don't keep track of such things. It seems... Uh, I was trying to link time codes on all the videos of election hearings in Michigan for no agenda. It was too much and almost overwhelming with the shit show. Yes, uh, this is not not appropriate use of anyone's time. Uh, Definitely worth a watch. Yes, I've watched quite a bit. And then he had a 17-minute or so clip of Patrick Kolbeck, former Michigan State Senator, talking at the Arizona hearings. Yes, I saw that. Uh, Patrick is an aerospace engineer that has a dash of dude named Ben in him. He ran for governor, GOP member. He spoke very well and educated while having plans. You know, this is exactly the point of of these uh, hearings, is to get uh, people like yourself to watch and to understand what is going on it is not to actually win any court cases it is a foundation for the fourth act that you're in right now any hoots the whole clip is worth listen to thank you enjoy the santa sack of threes for christmas and merry christmas to you both you both have been a beacon of light in the darkness of media deconstruction much love for both of you and i mean that from the bottom of my heart 
I was trying to think of some classic clips, but I'm a sucker for a good toe tapper, so some goat karma with the boogity boogity amen. P.S. I may be wrong, but I believe the first notion of chapters in No Agenda Podcast was set forth by Comic Strip Blogger, which I am pretty sure others scoffed at as silly. Holy shit. Was I wrong? It's amazing. Now I can strategically hit people in the mouth with N.A. chapters. Yes. Uh, the difference is, is uh, those used to be baked into the MP3, and with podcasting 2.0, uh, they are as available separately, and so any podcast app can uh, can play them. And happy to play your requested jingle. <laughs> You've got <laughs> karma. I think we're going to use Santa's sack of threes. Who? Me. In the newsletter. Santa sack of threes. That's yes, beautiful. I like it. I want to also thank uh, Dame Misty and Sir Dodger for the gift pack that they sent out. I don't know if you got one. Um, I've been to the post office twice, and both times... There were about a hundred people out the door, uh, so I'm just trying to find a morning when I. There's something waiting for me, I know, because I have to pick it up at the window. That's probably this. That's probably it's a nice yeah, yeah. one. It, it's one of the better packs, you know. It's, you know, one of these gift packs that somebody puts together, uh-huh. but it's not done by these guys who just or make a living out of it. Because there's good product in here, good wine and good oh, really? uh, oh, nice. actual brie cheese. That's quite mm. nice. It needs mm. refrigeration. It's probably going to go bad in yours. Um, and it's, and it doesn't include, it has actual real salami. It doesn't include the dreaded summer sausage. <laughs> I'm not aware which is of a this. beef salami that is inedible. Huh? Yeah. Summer sausage. Is that a, is that a staple of the horrible Christmas packages? Yes. So it's, you can be a summer sausage. This is beef salami. It is greasy and it's oh, just, a, no. It is really a dreadful product. I don't know why they even make it. Anyway, Steve Ben Benstra is next on our list in Nashville, Tennessee, three hundred thirty-three dollars. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hi hey friends, guys. and hi. in the morning, <laughs> please credit this donation to my smoking hot wife Jessica in honor okay. of her forty-fourth birthday on December eleventh. Okay, Jessica's name is replaced. Uh, yeah, done. It will catch her up to me in our pursuit of Dame Knighthood. Her favorite jingle, please. We're all going to die, and it's true. That's all. Short note. Thanks for keeping us sane. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Kriegs is still a douchebag. Douchebag. <laughs> that's Steve in Nashville. We're all going to die. That's true. All right. Perfect. And she's on the list. Michael Mansell in Claremont, Washington, 333. A lot of 333s today. I like that. Uh, look at the HTTP codes. My donation is meant to be 418. My birthday is April 1st, and a teapot seems apt. Man speaks in riddles. <laughs> we, we, we sail at dawn. <laughs> Let me see what his... Uh... A wet bird flies at night. So is this uh, the wet bird? Do you think this is some kind of HTTP code four eighteen or three thirty? Let me see. Let me look at his link here for a second. I know you have to go list some H- no, HTTP. Yeah, code. I've got the list here. So let's see. It yeah. four four eight. He said four eighteen was his request. Or three thirty three three thirty three. Oh, I'm a teapot. Four eighteen. This is interesting. Okay, HTTP error 418 is I'm a teapot. This code was, <laughs> how can I not know this? This code was defined in 1998 as one of the traditional IETF April Fool's jokes. Huh. Huh. I didn't realize it. And it's an RFC. Uh, the RFC specifies this code should be returned by teapots requested to brew coffee. Oh, this is from the... Uh, was that that one that MIT way back in the day they had a a webcam on a coffee pot and you could you could brew the coffee on through a web interface? I think you could just watch it. I like that though. I did. I did not realize. Uh, I was not aware of four eighteen. That's some good internet lore. Huh. Well, apparently because we've never uh, mentioned it before, he <laughs> it's good one, Michael. Felt Thank you. Obliged to t- clue us in. Well, I feel uh, I feel knowledgeable now. Thank you. 
Uh, now we have Jason By By Bell or Bible in Austin, right down the street from you. Uh, no note, and I look up his name. I can't find it. I, I'll take another look for donations later and see if I can find it that way. I uh, yeah, and I looked it, as well. Three hundred thirty-three dollars. Yeah, Sir B. Low in Plano, Texas, another Texan, drops us down to associate executive producer, the dreaded two sixty-six. Um, he says, "This is jingles prep, fisting nuts." <laughs> I'm donating today not simply to help the show, but out of pure selfishness for karma. Okay. Please load me up with the full load of job and relationship TPP karma. Also, I'm now in the habit of purchasing a large snack, usually bag of mixed nuts and chocolate and water before boarding a flight in order to avoid having to wear my mask for the full flight. <laughs> Big giant bag. <laughs> Spring potato chips. <laughs> Unfortunately, I continually catch myself doing the whole, uh, the whole fisting of my nuts. This with chocolate in there. Oh uh, no! Yuck. This is extra wrong. This is it, th this isn't just unseemly in my mind's eye, based on John's description, but it's rather messy. So, John, how do you eat your nuts? <laughs> <laughs> what a character! <laughs> Thanks, you all. Uh, Joe, Joe Below, uh, God bless Texas. I, just go for it, John. Tell us uh, your um, peeve about the fisting method of eating snacks on an airplane. Okay. I see this on the airplane, and it's very annoying, and I think it will result in, in fights breaking out because it's just so annoying to watch. Guy takes his bag of peanuts and he throws a pile of them into his palm of his hand, and then he makes a fist around the nuts. Around the nuts. And then he shakes his fist to try to bring a nut to the little hole. Stop! To the little hole. <laughs> and then he throws a nut in his mouth from his fist. From his fist. Then he does it again. He shakes and throws and shakes and throws. It is annoying as hell to watch. Jobs. 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 And jobs. You've got karma. Ah, uh, another classic. Classic no agenda. Jingle. Uh, Steve Banstra in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, I'm sorry. I already did him a year ago. Sir Scampers. I'm sorry, $212. This is where the cursor was, sorry. That's all right. Uh, this is in honor of my mother, who would have turned 65 today, 1210. Lost her two months ago. F. Alzheimer's. Oh, yeah. Can I get a Wusa karma, please? Love and light and love and light and love you mean it. Wusa. 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 You've got karma. Wusa. 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 By the way, um, I do have two new karma jingles if anyone ever wants them since this. It, does seem to morph from time to time. Uh, we have one that was requested previously. Someone was surprised we did not have an R2-D2 karma. You've got... <laughs> karma. <laughs> so like a goat. Yeah, well, but it's R2-D2 screaming. And we have a You Got Pharma. But you've got pharma. <laughs> In case anyone wants it, it's available from the menu. Yay. <laughs> Anonymous is la next, not, but not last. Uh, $205.33. Please keep me anonymous. Dedicate this to Jay Sal and the funky bunch out of Melbourne, Florida, who hit me in the mouth about two months ago. Uh, need a de-douching for myself, thanks. <laughs> You've been de-douched. So, so I'm going to put Jay, Sal, and the Funky Bunch from Melbourne, Florida as the credit, right? That's what's being asked here? Is that what he did? Yeah. He says. Why not? Dedicated to. Okay. So it's dedicated. Yeah, I done. give it to him. It's better, isn't it? Done. Done. But done Charles done. Van de Sand in Bayside, California, 201. You're ruining my life. Thank you. From behind the Redwood <laughs> Curtain, all Heil Gavin, our Ken Doll overlord. <laughs> A man with a point to make. <laughs> Ken Dahl, yes. Overlord. Is Troy this? Angst is next on the list from Langsburg, Michigan, 200, probably in local one. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, love you guys. Been around since the DSC days and a monthly donor, but wanted to get you guys your share of the stock tip to buy Nokia back in March. <laughs> Keep up the great work. <laughs> I, don't, no jingles, no I don't know if it was a tip. <laughs> I think you're talking about, uh, wasn't that when Barr was railing on China and said uh, someone should invest in Nokia? Yeah, maybe. I and don't then, remember. And there was, a pop, there was a pop on the Nokia stock. Yeah, Nokia should have popped. Yeah. Tyler Chrisman in Newark, Delaware, 200 bucks. ITM, uh, heading to my first meetup in Philly. Nice. Could you send a D-douche? What? I said, nice, going to the first meetup in Philly. Nice. Could you get send a de-douching back through time for me to, <laughs> so I arrive in good form? Well, I guess. <laughs> You've been de-douched. Hope that works. Give everyone a TPP from me. Uh, I am going to the D.C. March on the 12th to show my discontent <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah, very good. Jobs. 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 And jobs. You've got karma. And last on this slightly top-heavy list, Nikki and the Lucky Dogs, 200 bucks, parts unknown. Dear John and Adam, thank you for the insightful conversation. I discovered you on Joe Rogan and haven't listened to him since. <laughs> well, you can still listen to him. Hey, He's, hey, Adam's hey. coming back on the show he, soon. You know what happened? So December 1st, he's exclusive on oh, Spotify. So you can't listen to him if you, yeah. But wait, but wait. Yeah. So... They took everything off. Of, all the MP3s are gone. But yeah. YouTube, they took off every single, not every single one, but um, my uh, hundreds of them. My appearance from March is still up, or was last time I looked. But the problem is millions of comments were destroyed. The whole, com- the whole Rogan community participated in the YouTube comments. That's their thing. And there's no substitute. And go read the comments because they're you know they have clips, twenty minutes of a day of each show. The the comments are people are just they're very distraught. They're sad. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm just saying. That's sad. It's sad that uh, I'm I don't sure know. they are sad. It was what it's an outlet. Didn't have to destroy it. Destroy. It could have changed the video. Oh well. That's just me. Hello? Hello? John? Are you gone? Yep. He hung up on me. Well, let's see if he comes back. Oh, you've lost connection to clean feet. It may be me. Okay, let's... Let me refresh. Am I still streaming? Yep, still streaming. Let's see. It might have been might have been me. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there a, you are. Oh, there we. I think that was on my end. Yeah, it was according to my. Uh, uh, yeah, I got a connection error or something. Hold on, let me see where we were. My clean see. feed blanked you out. Destroy it. Destroy. It could have changed the video. Oh. Well. So just wrapping up that on Rogan, destroyed the video. Yeah. Okay. So you can pick it up with anything you want. And onward to the, or back to our last uh, donor, which I have to bring back up on the screen. Nikki and the Lucky Dogs, 200 bucks from Lucky Dog City. Uh, anyway, she... Uh, or Nikki saw Rogan and hasn't seen him since. Caught in California, I've been trying to hit friends in the mouth so I don't feel so lonely in this blue state. Mm, good luck. Yeah, there's plenty of people. So go to the Central Valley. They're all over the place. Uh, anyway, it's not working, but fa- face masks are a dead giveaway of which people I should avoid, so I'm finding new friends more easily. I'm donating because I love you guys and because I could use a dose of house buying karma. My mom has dementia and needs a family member near. Yeah. I provide sanctuary to special needs uh, needs pets who are also need a lot of supervision. I, if I buy a home very nearby, can I, I can be sure mom and the pets are safe. The house next door to mom's is for sale. It's perfect. Please offer a dose of house buying karma. Throw in some goat if that helps. Also, if listeners want to help with an unconventional and affordable home loan 
or anything else that helps me on my mission to help pets live better lives, I can be contacted through ljk9.com. That's L J. Is that right? K nine. Yeah, yeah, and then L-J. K, and then the number nine. And it, the, not, the, word, the letter was the number nine. Number I'll nine. Later. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. That's the letters L J and K, and the number nine. Okay. Dot com oh. with gr- gratitude. Nikki and the Lucky Dogs. All right, Nikki and the Nucky Dog. <laughs> Nikki and the Nucky Dogs. Nucky, L- no, L- Lucky Nikki dogs. and the Nucky Dogs. <laughs> Nikki and the Lucky Dogs. We've got a double dose for you right here with goats. For your mom and for the house buying. You've got <laughs> our mind. And there we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And that's that, our group of yeah. associate execs and executive producers for show 1272. Yeah, I'm sorry. 1302. 13, I don't know where that came from. I don't know where I got that number out of the blue. 1302 I'm episodes. I'm on autopilot. 1302 episodes, all produced by you, the producers all around Gitmo Nation. Thank you very much. And it's not just the treasure that you bring, but it is the clips. We've got more more than ever now producers uh, really working on uh, on their clipping skills, on uh, sending relevant information, not just sending an email that says, you got to see this, and it's an hour-long YouTube. Yeah, you've, really, <laughs> you've gotten better, giving us a couple of time codes. It's appreciated. Uh, and, and obviously, also, all the knowledge, certainly in these Rona times, people who have a lot of understanding of the medical uh, industry and their field, and also to a lot of the intelligence specialists out there who have been helping us as well. We're all going to build back better together that's for sure and we'll do it for someone else and we'll do this show again on sunday we appreciate all the people who want to help please go to dvorak.org slash n a and remember these credits are real you are an executive producer or an associate executive producer of the best podcast in the universe episode 1302 thank you for your courage your time talent and treasure our formula is this we go out we hit people in the mouth Okay. Well, I think before we go on to anything else, we should at least have a little bit of Brexit reporting. Gee, I I think it would be more appropriate to talk about the United States election before we talk about Brexit for a second. Seriously, I'm, I'm like, we haven't discussed it at all. I know. Yeah. So I'm. But well, I'm if, that's, if you, you. want to, you, you got some election stuff. I just think getting Brexit out of the way would get Brexit out of the way because every time, every no, show, just keep we, Brexit. No, no, keep Brexit on. Keep Brexit on the burner. Discussed. We dis- I brought it up on the last show, so that's bunk. The first time. Yeah, I brought it up on the last show. Yeah, because there I was news, did, but yes. it's been weeks and weeks. Yeah, so I don't care. Uh, we are in the middle of a constitutional crisis, which is coming to a head. It's going to be beautiful to watch. No. What? Let me just let me just finish. Let me just finish talking, man. Spin, spin away, my friend. I'm not spinning. I'm telling you what. I'm telling you facts. The facts are: Texas has filed a lawsuit against uh, mainly the swing states. Uh, this is where the Supreme Court will have to come in because the, one of their foremost tasks is to settle disputes between states. And now we have 17 other states who have joined in the Texas lawsuit. And on top of all that. <laughs> We are now hearing that the president himself is joining the lawsuit, and there are rumblings, this will be very uh, out of the ordinary, but there are rumblings that he would present himself. Uh, That's doubtful. Uh, This comes amidst just as so much blanketed uh, information, a lot of it's going to be misinformation, but they're very successful with all the lawsuits, uh, all of the noise that has slowly sleeped, seeped through to the mainstream, um, not really much mentioned other than it's crazy, don't pay attention to it, and lo and behold, people are starting to open up, and uh, open up to the possibility that, yeah, okay, first it was crazy and nothing, then it was, well, there's no widespread election fraud, 
And it's now turned into... Don't forget Baseless. Don't forget Baseless. Baseless. Uh, baseless is gone. Baseless is off the radar for some reason. They're not talking about it anymore. And there's a number of things that are cropping up that are quite irritating. Um, and it's all coming to- together with things like the National Defense Authorization Act. Again, I'm looking at everything coming together. I'm just, I'm just analyzing what I think is happening, what a lot of people think is that we're going to be shown in the next couple of weeks all the corruption, all the people that are corrupted, how they corrupted, uh, how the money was flowing. Let's stop there for one moment, because that's coming out. It's heralded as being fantastic, but it really was the Chan Zuckerberg Foundation who did indeed give $350 million to states and counties to put hundreds of extra drop boxes, all kinds of things, and it actually matched what the federal government gave for coronavirus hardships in the 2020 election. Election officials say things could have been a lot worse last month. It's Lines NPR. The polls would have been longer and the ballots would have taken more time to count if they hadn't gotten a big infusion of cash. It came from a nonprofit funded by Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. We should mention Facebook is among NPR's financial supporters. Mm-hmm. Local yeah. officials say they are mm-hmm. grateful for the help, but some observers say this is no way to fund an election. Here's Tom Sheck of the investigative group APM Report. Election officials in Chester County, Pennsylvania, did something different this year. Some residents were worried about whether election drop boxes were secure, so the workers who collected the ballots wore body cameras. This is Ranger Pat Conlon. I have arrived at my first destination for the voter services ballot collection. Each it day, county workers recorded video as they opened drop minutes. boxes and collected the ballots before delivering them to the election office. Chester County Voting Services Director Bill Turner says the body cameras and some drop boxes would never have happened without a grant from the Center for Tech and Civic Life. So the, the Center for Tech and Civic, Civic Life, which I looked up, the Form 990, they've never received more than a million dollars a year in funding. It's very it's very small, but all the usual suspects are uh, on the advisory board. And so all of a sudden they received this $350 million dollars. And it was used to to buy equipment. What kind of equipment? To shore up things. To put, as I said, to put in extra drop boxes. And of course, they they wore some body cameras. But there was a lot of drop drop boxes that were not that, under where surveillance. Where did money come from? From from Zuckerberg. It was just Zuckerberg's personal cash. The Chan Zuckerberg uh, initiative. That is him and his wife's uh, nonprofit. They sent it to the center for. Uh, Tech and Civic Life, and the Center for Tech and Civic Life distributed it to the counties and the states, mainly in the swing states. So, uh, somewhat... Nothing fishy there. Nothing fishy at all. Um, So there's money that was flowing. Uh, The Dominion voting systems, I won't dive too deep into it, but this morning I saw a video, which makes no sense to play uh, on the show, but it is... Uh, the follow-up to what happened in Michigan. Yeah, well, the big news uh, coming out of Antrim County, Michigan this morning, Pete, is that a judge actually granted our team access to 22 of the Dominion voting machines for us to conduct a forensic audit. So if you remember, this is the county that had this switch of uh, 6,000 votes from President Trump to Joe Biden, and that was an unexplained and so-called glitch. And so our team is able to go in this morning at about 8.30 and will be there for about eight hours hours to conduct that forensic examination and we'll have the results in about 48 hours and that'll tell us a lot about these machines they also received a similar grant in georgia uh so they're they've also been looking at that and you'll see that (laughs) the operator of the machine uh demonstrates very clearly how you can run the same ballot through the machine once twice as many times as you want how you can put an empty ballot in and mark it up however you want (laughs) and then although i have not seen proof of it um, there is a story that they fed equal amount of Biden and Trump ballots into a machine in Georgia, and it split it split the votes and came out twenty five, I think twenty six percent in favor of Biden on an equal number of ballots that were sent through the machine. Haven't seen that myself, so I'm not exactly sure. Amongst this comes the uh, promotion and announcement of the Smartmatic chairman. 
This is the guy, uh, uh, Lord Mark Malik Brown, uh, who was in charge of the software that was in these systems. He has been promoted to the role of president uh, within George Soros's Open Society Foundation. I thought that was a nice, bold move. Go ahead, just slap it in our face. There's nothing to see here. So this is coming down to uh, the final straws. I really believe uh, the president is out there with his team spreading the word that this is China and the China has taken control of our country has take he's going to be showing and as we're seeing taking control of the pharmaceutical taking control of technology he's he's threatening a veto on the National Defense Authorization Act which you know we've been reading these since the inception of the show it's what funds the military it's it's what funds the military industrial complex and what he has demanded is under the auspices of it is a national security threat to have the social media companies um, shielded by Section 230 um, of the Communications Decency Act uh, so that they can just willy-nilly delete stuff, such as a C-SPAN video of doctors talking in a Senate hearing. And he's going to veto that. I don't know if we'll see how powerful... Well, you know who's... the main one of the main thrusters behind this getting rid of this this Tulsi, section two Tulsi Gabbard Tulsi Gabbard Tulsi Gabbard she's she's been tweeting she's all in with the president on this uh, I don't want section two thirty to be terminated because uh, we have we survive under this as well uh, even no agenda social is important to have uh, to be indemnified from being sued about someone saying nutty on that. Uh, but I would like it to be suspended or something for these guys because they've just taken it to a whole nother level as to what they feel they can take off. And the president sees that as a threat to national security. And that is now the uh, that is now the question. Of well, whether that it, will it work could be not. modified because, for example, with no agenda social, nobody does anything. So there's not moderators trying to take off posts. I mean, you, people just ban their own posts that they don't want. Right. That's, how, that's how it should, should be. be. Yes, exactly. But, uh, you know, Facebook actually has people that will take down posts if they're politically incorrect or if this goes against yeah, the it's, rules. It's called Twitter publishing and editing. Thing. Yeah, it's called publishing and editing, if, and it's wrong. If you say uh, this, what you're talking about right now about this election, if it was just some sort of a Twitter post, it would be taken off and you'd probably get banned. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. In a heartbeat. Um. And, and so that's a part of it. And I was, I was, you know, everyone's throwing all their Chinese crap out right now because it's it's on vogue. And we're and whether President Trump's strategy works or not, people are going to be aware to China. And I love it's it's hitting podcasting. You know, Libsyn. You know, Libsyn, right? Libsyn, the they're kind of like a Podbean, only different. It's Podbean uh, light. Yeah. So Libsyn, and you, and you know, there's a there's a lot of companies that are looking to be bought mainly by spotify and and lipson has now had to ask the court to cancel stock held by chinese shareholders apparently they own 25 percent of lipson and these half of them are in jail they can't get any paperwork on them so they've completely crippled lipson as a podcasting outfit they can't acquire anything or be acquired with this uh with this uh, problem they have, which I think is just, yeah, I think it's so, it's so perfect to see how the Chinese are in on everything. And um, to finish this up, the only thing I have, um, don't want that. Um, yes. Now, this is the conspiracy part. I think all of this is. What I've just said is not spin; it's just fact. And 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 this lawsuit uh, of the multiple states will be very interesting. I don't see how the Supreme Court can refuse to hear it. Uh, I'm not sure, and I'll give Sir Gene of uh, of the Duke of Texas uh, the benefit here. I'm not sure Amy Coney Barrett is going to be as helpful as the president thinks. She's she's not really signing a lot of things and is not dissenting on other things. She's very quiet. So we'll see if. Uh, if uh, what's his face Roberts is not on board, if the remaining five, if it really is five, or maybe it's four, we'll see. But the general thinking is uh, there will be a second term of President Trump. 
We'll see. Uh, that is definitely not what the media thinks. That's not what my partner, John C. Dvorak, thinks. Uh, but I'm an optimist. Uh, and in this case, I'm an optimist for the country because I would like China to go down with this. Whether we get Biden or not, the result will be the same. We've got to, we've got to stop China. And here's the conspiracy theory part. Devil storm. Devil storm. Yes, the 82nd Airborne scrambled yesterday. It's time for one of those drills. This drill is taking place all across America. It's just a drill, so we have nothing to worry about. And the Navy is in on it as well. According to the U.S. Naval Institute, the Navy has deployed three aircraft carriers plus a landing helicopter dock, LHD, off the U.S. West Coast, and two aircraft carriers and their strike groups plus another LHD off the U.S. East Coast. Off the West Coast is the USS Carl Vinson in the Pacific, not at port, along the Oregon-Washington border. Then you have the USS Essex on the right off the East coast of san francisco let's go through these the uss theodore roosevelt and its strike group off the coast of los angeles off the east coast are the uss dwight d eisenhower off the coast of connecticut let's go a step further the uss gerald r ford off the coast of new jersey the uss iwo jima off the coast of south carolina and so here's a map showing the positioning of the ships um, around the world just a screenshot there from usni news all right so let me explain how this is being played in conspiracy circles the thinking is twofold one this is going to be necessary to arrest all of the people, all probably Chinese operatives around the country, possible. Uh, the second one is when Trump is declared president for the second term and there's a revolt. Uh, when the, And this goes back to one of your original clips, which I thought was funny. Um, the Democrats will call in the United Nations in the blue helmets, and so now we have all the ships positioned around the country to protect from the international force coming in to uh, take over uh, from Donald Trump. And all of this will happen under something very special, because they need to flip on harp for this well hey guys and a geomagnetic hey storm guys. watch has actually been this is a this is a local uh, station local weather guy in michigan well hey guys and a geomagnetic hey storm watch has actually been issued and here's why let's explain what's going on this sunspot right here when they rotate around the sun when it was directed toward earth it erupted a massive solar flare and when that happens that accelerates the normal stream of charged particles that comes from the sun to the earth so when that happens those particles which normally generate a continuous aurora near the north pole that forces that ring we call it the aurora ring farther south so what we're thinking it's going to get close enough where we have a shot at seeing those northern lights. So we're talking about later Wednesday night or Thursday evening. And here's the key. If this acceleration happens to hit during the daytime tomorrow, well, we don't get a chance to see it because it's daylight. But if that happens later tonight, meaning Wednesday night or early Thursday evening, maybe we have a shot. So that's when you want to get out. Have Have you ever been able to see northern lights in Michigan? What was your last word? Michigan. Michigan? Seriously? I think I think it's doable. I think you, you can see him in Washington once in a while. Yeah, that's a little bit farther north of Michigan, but this is he's predicting like, oh, this is how, how big was this coronal mass ejection? Was that a really big one? Is this going to can we No, it's news to me, but I heard these northern light phenomena do do happen. Oh yeah, but that seems a little far down south. Well, this Michigan's pretty up there. Further south, I mean, northern Michigan, the, the yeah. Upper Peninsula is yeah. pretty is up there. It's as high as is. I think it's on the same. Um, I think it's on the same uh, latitude as uh, Washington. Well, it may be a part of. <laughs> this has got to be my favorite clip of the entire week, because it it comes from NBC. It's taken very seriously. It was printed around the world. And it kind of vindicates me. 
Hi, Alison. Well, this is quite a story, and it comes from the man who headed Israel's space security program for nearly 30 years. Chaim Eshed is making the extraordinary claim that the United States and Israel have been in contact with a group of aliens for years, not immigrants, but extraterrestrials. He has called them the Galactic Federation. Don't we know the Galactic Federation? Don't we have a yeah, the place on uh, Me TV? No, but don't we have a producer who, who's a member who sends us on his stationery? Oh, uh, yes, uh, the, uh, D- Barosky up there in Washington State, yeah. which would be appropriate. Yeah, yeah he's the, the fire bottles. Uh, yeah, Earl he's a member of the Duke. Galactic Federation, isn't he? United Federation of Planets. Oh, oh, that's a subgroup. Oh, well. Of aliens. And he says President Trump is aware of the existence of these aliens <laughs> and has been on the verge of revealing their secrets. Okay. <laughs> this is the best story of the year. Trump knows about the aliens, and he's been on the verge of telling us about it. So who knows? It could come any minute. He claims, but was asked not to do so by the Federation in order to prevent what he calls mass hysteria. Well, the retired general says the U.S. and Israel have kept it from the public because, quotes, humanity isn't ready and the aliens don't want to reveal themselves until humanity can evolve, he says, and understand what space really is. Well, the good news is that he claims an agreement has been reached between the U.S. government and the aliens, a contract to do experiments here. There's also, he says, a secret underground base on Mars where there are American and alien representatives. Well, yes, of course. And they stage the trip to Mars from the moon base where the Israelis are. Hello. Now, this former head of a branch of Israel's defense ministry is 87. He was very well respected, at least until now. He said all this in an interview with an Israeli newspaper in Hebrew, but it's really taken off after parts of it were published in English by the Jerusalem Post today. He says he's come forward now in the hope that his news will be accepted as true. He notes that if he'd made these claims five years ago, he would have been hospitalized, but now he says, I've got nothing to lose. Well, so far, President Trump has not tweeted about this, though remember a year ago, he did set up the Space Force as the fifth branch of the U.S. Armed Forces. Well, we did ask the White House, the Department of Defense, and Israeli officials to comment. So far, they have not responded to the NBC News request. And I wonder if they will. (laughs) They're all taking this story so seriously. I I love it. I'm all in. This was on NBC? NBC, yeah. And it's wow. they're taking it seriously they've put they've put out articles i think the new york times wrote about it because this guy was uh, you know it was as you pointed out a very respected general he's 87 he's on his way out it's like well i might as well tell you now so we have so much to look forward to in the next six we've weeks had, <laughs> if you remember when they had all those top scientists that made it went to washington dc and exposed all this stuff this has been going on for a decade there's all these guys that yeah. come around and say, well, we know this, we know that, we, these guys are around, and uh, it just never goes anywhere. But, no, that's, I disagree, because for years now, slowly it's been seeping in. Slow, and, and, like, Tucker Carlson does UFO segments, you know, and about the Tic Tac thing that's been flying around. I think if they're looking for a general acceptance, it's, we're getting closer to it, because people are not afraid or outraged or I oh my agree. god I, I don't think anybody cares that much but what what tic tac thing flying around oh you, this this is what the 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 air force generals have said was real this video of this uh, that they got you've seen the video it looks like a little tic tac oh, thing flying around yeah well but at least they, something lands somewhere we can all go look at it yeah you know, i'll pay a fee for 10 bucks or uh, maybe 20 i may pay 50 bucks to go see it but it has to land has to set up shop, put a fence around it, go go all get to go look at it, spend whatever you want, touch it. Yeah. So here, yeah. so here's what happens: these lawsuits start to unfurl. Uh, either we can blame it all on China, and it's right back the whole thing. China did the Wuhan flu; uh, that was on purpose. Uh, they took all their operatives, uh, like uh, Swalwell and anyone else they needed. They got their Chan Zuckerberg money. And they got all the infrastructure set up. They totally had to, and we've got them saying, ha ha, we did it. Congratulations. We've got our friends back in the top. And if that doesn't work, then we just bring out the aliens. <laughs>
Wow, that's like a shaggy dog story you just developed there. But this is what this is. It's it can't be anything else. Yeah, for me, it could be for it me. Could be bull crap. For me, it could be. But these lawsuits and the Supreme Court and states uh, not not uh, believing this election that's just real, and that's and that's going to that may be the avenue. We'll see. No well, one seems to be upset. That, that is, that would be the avenue. If there's an avenue, that would be it. No one seems to be upset about it. No, I don't know any kids running around freaking out. I think everyone kind of knows that, well, you know, it happened, however it happened. I don't want to hear about it. I, I, I don't want to know. No one's upset. No one's running with their hair on fire. Because I think everybody knows. And and please, at least let us get to the bottom of the voting Let's change that for 2022 and 2024. Then release the aliens. for the Georgia runoff. Yeah, well, um, but the the this strategy, I think it's real. I don't know if it's going to work, but I, I do think this is really what they're doing. Everything points to this. You know, the, I was almost everything we do on this show, uh, most of these little chapters now, Yes. Are never covered by the mainstream media, and if they are, it's like I didn't notice or whatever. And, and so I've got a story. Oh, good. Which it's just in the same along in the same lines about the this one. I got this from, from France twenty four. I have to go watch for France twenty four to find out the details of the lawsuit <laughs> against Facebook. Yeah. I, gee, it's amazing how little has been covered of that, huh? There's been nothing covered in it. I mean, I've been. Tucker, Tuck, 20, Tucker okay, covered. Here it He's is. the France only guy. 20, yeah, let's listen to France 24. Lawsuits of unprecedented scope. The American government's Federal Trade scope. Commission and the Attorneys General of 48 states against the biggest name in social media, Facebook. In two separate lawsuits, they argue that the social media behemoth has created a monopoly by abusing its dominant position to buy potential competition rather than compete against it. In an effort to maintain its market dominance in social networking, Facebook has employed a buy or bury strategy to impede competing services. First, Facebook used vast amounts of money to acquire smaller rivals and potential rivals before they could threaten the company's dominance. In 2012, Facebook bought Instagram for $1 billion, following that with a $22 billion purchase of messaging service WhatsApp in 2014. Facebook's general counsel said the FTC complaint doesn't take into account the investments that the tech giant has made into its platforms to make them what they are today. This is revisionist history. Instagram and WhatsApp became the incredible products they are today because Facebook invested billions of dollars and years of innovation and expertise. The government now wants a do-over, sending a chilling warning to American businesses that no sale is ever final. The lawsuits could see Facebook divesting Instagram and WhatsApp or having to notify the plaintiffs of any acquisition it plans to make over $10 million, potentially putting significant breaks on the company's purchasing power. The complaints also take aim at the way in which Facebook uses personal data to reinforce its monopoly status, such as customizing the online experience to stop people from switching from the platform. Facebook has denounced the lawsuit and vowed to defend itself vigorously. <clears throat> so I was talking with the keeper about this this morning because Facebook says, "Hey, the government looked at our at our acquisition of WhatsApp. The government looked at our acquisition of Instagram. Why didn't they say anything?" And what is not in this report, France twenty four, is that the emails were uncovered where Zuckerberg threatens. The guys at WhatsApp, and I think the guys at Instagram as well, and said, "Oh, you don't, you're not going to let us buy you. We're just going to build something just like and crush you." I think he used the word "crush." That's yes, that, that, that came out in the not in that report, but that's come out. Uh, and uh, I, I think this also may may have to do with the acceleration of Facebook's digital money, the Libra. Uh, no one wants that. Uh, so that would be another reason to to, well, to mess with that them. That falls into the no agenda uh, thinking that we've developed over the years, where anyone who tries to do alternative currencies gets quashed. Yes. And finally, 
I think China's going to come into this lawsuit. I think it'll it, it'll come up. And, and this, this may be another, let's just throw someone under the bus. Who's the most in bed with China? Because they all are. Eh, Facebook. I think it's it possible. Does, it does bother me, and they, Facebook did bring it up about the, well, you know, you let us do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I've had nothing but, I mean, Silicon Valley kind of operates on the principle, let's build a company, let's let Google buy us, let Microsoft buy us. That's, let one that's of these the whole guys. path. That's what venture capital is about these days. Fund somebody to get bought with a 100 multiple by uh, Google, Facebook, etc. And the FTC has not done any sort of good work over the last, I'd say, 30 years, perhaps, of, you know, these you know what they've mergers done? and acquisitions. But, you know what the FTC buying? has done? All the FTC has done is they've gone after a social media uh, in- influencers to force them to disclose that they're promoting a product. That's all they've done. They've harassed the little children. Yeah, they harass the children and let these behemoths just go go on their merry way buying the competition, yeah. which I've always complained about. Uh, following this closely, yeah, it's 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 and it keeps going on, and they never stop it. They never say, "Well, we, well, I mean, it's interesting. You're going to buy them out, but no, they never say. I mean, when they do say no, there's some alternative reason, yeah. like some EU edict or something else is going on. They say no, and then they okay, you can do it. They stopped the, the merger, I think, between, I think it was Sprint, it was either Sprint and T-Mobile, there was some, maybe they did merge, but there was some early attempt to merge one of these companies with AT&T or something, they, they stopped that for some reason, they let another one go through. It's 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 very sketchy, this the, this Fair Trade Commission should be shut down. No, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fully expecting a, a China angle to this. It's the easiest well, way. Maybe. That's the That'd easiest way. <laughs> it would be really great. And you know that that's there. You mentioned the alternative currency, um, which uh, as a maximalist, that would only be Bitcoin. Uh, to show you the power of the American financial system, listen to the dumbest report ever from Fox Business News. Business News. It's, uh, it's the du- you, know, you may have noticed that uh, Bitcoin is now, they put the ticker back up because it's above 18000 It's actually had an all-time high, just under $20,000. And so now everyone's all jacked about it. And they're jacked about it for a bunch of reasons because, you know, PayPal is now supposedly in it. And there's all these different boardrooms who say, well, some of our cash should be in Bitcoin. And so now they're they kind of want to accept that that's okay, but it's still a piece of crap. It's a piece of crap. Big whale traders that dictate where Bitcoin goes each and every day. You know, there's only a limited supply of $15 million worth of Bitcoin that comes online each and every day. And according to one analysis, 95% of that Bitcoin supply <coughs> is being bought up by those that are trading on PayPal or Square. And not just individuals, but as you heard, also institutional money as well. And so this is a fear of missing out, FOMO as we call it. Yeah, but the thing is, to me, is becoming like a regular currency. Right. However, they have to get the the usage and the cost per use down because you heard that it costs around $7 to spend Bitcoin and buying a pizza or something online. That has to come down in order for it to be like a real <laughs> currency and easy to use. Do you remember how you explained PayPal and buying a pizza with Bitcoin? Yes, remember that right. one? And he just brought it back up again? Yes. Yeah, okay. $7 <laughs> to buy a well. pizza with a Bitcoin. <laughs> you, did. you did. You did. But $7 per transaction, transaction with Bitcoin. Costs, yeah. you got to get that down. Mm-hmm. That is bull crap. That is the that is the biggest bull crap piece of information I've heard. That to buy a pizza with Bitcoin, you have to pay seven dollars. Okay, Fox Business News. I'll just have you know that the Lightning Network, which is Bitcoin, is a part of Podcasting 2.0, and you can pay people in real time per minute. So this is bull crap. They definitely don't want anyone having a different kind of currency. And Fox Business News is all in on it. Well, if there was somebody you could identify who actually is behind Bitcoin, they would really have problems. Yeah. Um, you know I what? Mean, I that's how Gaddafi got killed, if we're going to really go back into it. I had a, uh, a dinner with a prominent Bitcoiner who was in town because, you know, I'm in the community. 
And you know, we have a prominent Bitcoiner in our in our community up in Washington State. Oh, we have several prominent Bitcoiners. Who is that? Can we mention that person's name? I can't remember his name. I <laughs> met him though at one of the meetups. Yeah, we got a, we got a lot of Bitcoiners. Um, this this person who has could could know possibly. Uh, he's con- convinced he knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. You want to have a guess? Sure. You want to have a guess? Elon Musk. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's that's the one. That's what he said. He says, I'm pretty sure it's Elon. Could be. Elon! Yeah. Oh, Elon! <laughs> With his $100 million house in Austin. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a secret. So he bought a $100 million house in Oh, you had one built? No, 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 no. Don't you remember? I got this from the... From the former New York banker's wife, who's who was in on the scene, that uh, it was the the jewelry designer. Um, I forget her name. Uh, she does earrings and stuff. Uh, they were building a house for twenty five million dollars, and a real estate agent said, "I have someone who wants that plot. You know, don't don't care about the house. Uh, just name your price." And they said, "Okay, seventy five million. And apparently, that went through. Plus another twenty five million to build. So that's a hundred million. Well, that's the way to do business. Yeah, when you're blowing up rockets on the pad. Well, actually, <laughs> that was impressive. I was impressed with that thing. Did you see that flight of the the starship that 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 uh, that they launched yesterday? Yeah, I saw it. I I thought the way it came back down, I thought was really. You know, it, it obviously something went wrong at the very end, but it was quite impressive how it just was horizontal. And kind of just flying down to Earth, and then when it was time, whoosh, the rockets fired, and it, I mean, it was unbelievable to see. It looked actually unreal. That's how good it was. It looked like I'm one of those. Surprised that that technology wasn't developed sooner. Yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 not that close into the rocketry stuff. I know people went down there to watch it. Stayed for three days because it got de- delayed. You got to be hardcore, man see that so let's listen to some super cuts this is a lousy super cuts <laughs> okay but it's, it's the it's the media that's over very critical of trump now with with biden they're fawning all over him. oh yes yes biden is the man they are experienced they are well prepared boy how refreshing is that and it's very refreshing i was talking to a democrat who just said this also felt like the avengers it felt like we're being rescued from this is that uh, yamish who's saying that I think so. Oh, yeah. like it's like the Avengers. It felt like the Avengers. It felt oh, like God. we're being rescued from this this <laughs> craziness that we've all lived through from the last four years, and now here are the superheroes to come and save us all. This is like being at the end of the Wizard of Oz. Well, this is like the 1980s Celtics basketball team. Trump really had the Z team. This is really the A team. Uh, the A team for the country. They are manifestly experienced and competent. The word competence been thrown around. Qualified. Very coherent. Calmness. Deep knowledge. Kindness. Deep commitment. Professionalism <laughs> is back. And expertise is back. And it's also nice to take a look at a group of appointees that don't look like a restricted all-white country club. Jake Sullivan, as the leader of the band, is the perfect choice. She is perfectly suited. With Alejandro, you're going to get confident, gifted leader, kind, thoughtful, brilliant. I can't think of a better person. Let me get your thoughts about Tony Blinken. I can't think of anybody better. I think tonight, maybe Absolutely. I'll be able to start going to sleep. Where'd you get that from? That's a good one. It, it was floating around. I, 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 I That's I good. Don't have the source I like handy, it. but I like it. I saw Joe. There's going to be a lot. This is watching these guys fawn over Biden and his cabinet. Here's a democracy now. A recent clip of the new Biden cabinet. Some of the new picks. President-elect Joe Biden will reportedly select Tom Vilsack as his agriculture secretary. Wait a minute, Vilsack. We know all these guys, right? Vilsack, was he with... And they're, all, they're all retreads. Yeah. Every one of them's a retread. <laughs> That's a retread. That sounds good. President-elect Joe Biden will reportedly select Tom Vilsack as his agriculture secretary, reprising the role he held under former President Obama. The news drew immediate condemnation from progressives and environmental and labor activists over Vilsack's track record of supporting corporate interests over farmers loosening regulations and backing of genetically modified herbicide-resistant crops. Vilsack also backed the mega-merger between Bayer and Monsanto. He's currently the president and CEO 
of the U.S. Dairy Export Council, which represents large corporate dairy interests. Many small family farms have been decimated in recent years due to agricultural monopolies and plunging dairy prices. In other cabinet news, Ohio Congressmember Marsha Fudge has been tapped to lead the Department of Housing and Urban Development. If confirmed, Fudge would be the first African-American woman to lead HUD. Yeah, and Fudge was the one that vouched for the judge after he beat his wife, and then she vote she vouched for that judge, and he went on to kill his wife. That's the story I heard. Yeah, exactly. Which is not a nice one. Yeah. Um, well, that story happened. Then there's the uh, uh, General Austin, uh, who is more of a elected pencil pusher than a general, a retired general. Um, now, Trump did this, too, bringing in the, the, I, the way it's supposed to work is you're supposed to have civilians in charge of the military, uh, the Pentagon, in charge of the money. That's not always great. I mean, we've got Rumsfeld, who lost $2 trillion and didn't know what happened to it. Um, that great civilian oversight has brought us absolutely zero audits. Oh, yeah, they'll be ready by 2035. Um, but uh, General Austin would have to have a waiver which I think Mattis got as well. Mattis was also crap. He also was no good. So I don't know if you really want these military guys running the military. Oh, and this came in this morning from ABC News. Pentagon to cut most of its support to CIA's counterterrorism missions. Well, what do you know? What do you know? CIA has alternate sources of income, as we all know. They do, but if you let me finish the story... The CIA Special Activity Center carries out covert operations and has its own paramilitary force, you are correct. Uh, While they act as an independent force, they rely on the military for transportation and logistical support. So that is being cut. I'm sure they've got all the money in the world to continue doing their evil business, but it is being cut. It'll be resolved. (laughs) And... uh, I think Joe might, I, you know, he mispronounced one of his nominees. And the way he, it's only 10 seconds, this clip, but the way he corrected, I think he was wearing a, an IFB or a hearing device and someone said something. Ah. Have, have a listen to this. I'm really proud of this group. For Secretary of Health and Education Service, I nominated Javier Bacaria. You know, Javier Bashir, excuse me. <laughs> uh, Javier Guacamole. What was his first thing he said? <laughs> I think he said Bacara. Let's see. I'm really proud of this group. For Secretary of Health and Education Service, I nominated Javier Bacaria. You know, Javier Bashir, excuse me. I don't think he was nominated for the Health and Human Services either. I think I think he got both wrong. But okay, that's fine. He didn't know how to pronounce his name because he's a great guy. I've met him several times. He's the perfect pick for me. Baccarat. I know him personally. Baccarat, whatever that guy's name is. Oh, Oh, man. That's going to be fun. Gosh. That would be so much fun. Two Brexit clips. Okay, Brexit, then we got to thank some more people. I would say that this is the, I got the report. Uh, from F- uh, France 24, again, they're not talking about this over here, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. And then I have the follow-up the next day. But this is the day before they had the big dinner. And they already, they kind of broke it down pretty well. I think they this guy, this reporter who covers this for France 24 is pretty decent. Well, let's go to Brussels and correspondent uh, Dave Keating. Dave, what's for dinner? Well, I've heard that it's fish from the English Channel. I don't know if that's true or not, but that would be uh, quite poignant, I think. Uh, Boris Johnson is scheduled to arrive here in Brussels at any moment. Of course, the restaurants are closed, so they're going to be eating, I imagine, in Ursula von der Leyen's office. There's obviously a lot of expectation building around this meeting tonight, but truth be told, there's a limit to what can be achieved here. When I talk to people in town, the expectations that we would get a deal out of this meeting tonight are extremely slim. 
them. Uh, the problem is that von der Leyen is operating under the mandate given to the Commission by the EU 27 governments. They have not changed that mandate. She's really not very flexible in what she can agree tonight. Boris Johnson, on the other hand, the red lines are his and his alone. He's flexible in what he can offer. So if we had a deal tonight, it would only be because Boris Johnson is coming here in order to go back on his red lines and agree a compromise. But judging from his statement in the House of Commons today, that seems very unlikely. He was digging in deep against the EU's demands for level playing field guarantees and for fishing access to UK water. So I think what at most what we could expect tonight is that Ursula von der Leyen hears what Boris Johnson says would be acceptable and then goes to the summit of EU leaders, EU prime ministers and presidents happening here in Brussels tomorrow and tells them, look, this is what Boris Johnson told me he can accept. Is it likely that they would then say, that sounds good, we'll agree to it? No, it's not. And we just got the invitation for tomorrow's summit from Council President Charles Michel. Uh, he doesn't even mention Brexit until the very end, and he only says, we do not anticipate discussing Brexit. So the expectations for this dinner tonight here in Brussels are very different from what we're hearing in terms of expectations in the UK. This guy could almost be uh, uh, narrating an Olympic curling event. He, he, <laughs> Doesn't it sound? He a bit rattles like that? it off. He's like a basketball guy. I kind of like it. And, for and he those... dribbles over there and he throws the same and he throws the three and blah 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 blah. <laughs> he, he's just a nonstop <laughs> chatterbox. I mean, these some talk stand-up guys who do these kinds of reports are pretty phenomenal, and you watch them because you know you can't. Oh, do he just it. rattles I, it I off. I rattles it, it off. Yeah, I was really good at that. I agree. And meanwhile, of course, that was like a little two-minute, twenty-two-second thing. Here's what the next day report was. Allow the dinner between UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and EU Commission. President Ursula von der Leyen fails to produce the goods with the post-Brexit trade deal as elusive as ever. Oh, yeah. And there's an update from today. Ten just, seconds. Yeah. Well, that's all you need. Because now, here, there's a twist. You thought this was just some kind of negotiation. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. The French are stepping in. Is France serious, then, about this visa? Yes, Anna, there's a lot of symbolism in that uh, visit happening today, just a few days before uh, European leaders get to Brussels for a, a summit. Now, what I would say, Anna, is, of course, we know that the French could veto this, but any country in Europe could do the same. We know that this deal is going to take EU27 unanimity. So if you look at the this this comments in context, and they go back to yesterday, uh, Barnier briefing EU27 ambassadors, this really is more... So anyone can veto this. Anyone? Yes, what kind of a... What kind of a deal is that? And, and and it's about fish. So they're bitching about the fish. So the Dutch can protest. Uh, the Belgians can protest. Of course, the France. Anybody. And every, and every, especially on the North Sea, anybody can protest. So and if they and it's a veto. Apparently, yeah, that means you have to get everyone in agreement. This is never going to happen, as we predicted. And it's always so dumb. In here now, it's about the fish, the Middle East. What are the problems between the Arabs and the Arabs and the Jews? Well, we know what it is. It's about who makes the better hummus. That's the entire root of the problem. And now we have China arguing with South Korea. Did you hear about this? No. If the saying holds true that you are what you eat, then Koreans are kimchi. 95% of them eat the spicy pickled cabbage every day. That's 2 million tons annually. Even its preparation is a celebrated ritual. So reports that China had secured international certification for a comparable product was something many Koreans found hard to digest. I read a media story that China now says kimchi is theirs and that they're making an international standard for it. It's absurd. I'm worried that they might steal other cultural goods, not just kimchi. A similar Chinese pickle called pao tsai was recently certified by the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, which pointed out the standard does not apply to kimchi. But China's state-run Global Times devoured the news, hailing the new standard for the, quote, kimchi industry led by China. Caught by surprise, China's foreign ministry recognized the piquant situation and called for more diplomacy. Is there an argument about this? I'm not aware of this. I think there has been some disagreement online, yes. Is that right? <laughs> Maybe we should go and ask our colleagues in the South Korean embassy about where's the argument. I think we should have more cooperation and sharing. 
This could be an international event. The kimchi wars are starting. Incident is the word. Oh, incident. I'm sorry. Yes. International incident regarding kimchi. Wow. Yeah. The Koreans are very kimchi centric. They're very kimchi or oriented. <laughs> They're oriented. Oh, boy. I'm going to show my support by donating to No Agenda. Imagine all the people who could do that. <laughs> That's oh, funny yeah, one. that'd be fun. Kimchi oriented. Yeah, on no Agenda. Racist. <laughs> yes, guilty as charged. <laughs> but we do have a few, few people to thank for show 1302. Yep. Starting with Anonymous, $120. Rob Van Dyke in Holland, $100. He's in Zondam, I believe. Mm. I don't know. Yes, I'm not sure. <laughs> he should be. I just wanted to say. You just wanted be. to say it. I know. I know. I just wanted to say it. Patricia and Paul Miro in Malone, Wisconsin, $100. Oh, this is a short list, by the way. We do it rather quickly. Ryan Darrow in Santa Anta, California. Anta. Santa Ana, California. Santa, Santa Anta. Uh, 89. Might have a little... Does he got anything in there about uh, calling somebody? He's got a long note for somebody. Uh, well, actually, I think... Which one is this? The Ryan? Yeah, Ryan. Ryan Darrow in Santa Anta. And, uh, 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 oh, yes. No, okay. I, I will mention this briefly. That during the Rona lockdown, he and his buddies uh, have created a Space Force a series with dolls, uh, oh. which features Barack Obama and uh, President Trump. I will put that link in the show notes so you could take a look at that. Uh, he just wanted some promotion, so uh, okay. Yeah, you went. Did you see it? Did you look at it? It's like a yeah. It's it's pretty low grade. Well, that <laughs> hey, eighty nine dollars from Santa Ana. What do you expect? <laughs> but I thought it was worth mentioning. Par- Parker Graves in Billings, Montana, sixty six. You also, I'm telling you, also went. Oh, cool. Let me take a look at it. And you went. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Did you see it or not? No. Oh. <laughs> Parker Graves in Billings, Montana. I was going to let you check it out first. It might <laughs> it's, bring out my It's eyeballs. Ken Dolls, basically. Animated Ken, Ken Dolls. Ken Dolls in a movie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They should have gotten a hold of our, our uh, of Renetti, maybe. Uh, Sir Lee Mofo in Tucson, Arizona, 5510. Sir Tom Darry in DeForest, Wisconsin, double nickels on the dime. The following people are $50 donors. I told you it'd be short. Sir Jonathan Meyer in Xenia, Ohio. Jesse Hall in Friendswood, Texas. Friendswood, Texas. Drew Mochak in Mountain View, California. Show up at a meetup. Edward Mazurik in Memphis, Tennessee. Joel Deruan in Bakersfield, California. Sir Hamus of the Piedmont Province in Mooresville, North Carolina. We have a lot of North Carolina people. Taylor Fitzmorris, I say it all the time. Fitzmorris, just old Fitzmorris. Uh, yes. Okay, what is it? Did, 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 okay. What happened? $50 donor, $50 donor. Fitzmorris, Fitzmorris, $50. James Darter, $50 from Oklahoma City. Matthias Milchinski in Stevenson Ranch, California. Michael Hayner in Paris, California. Stephen, we have a lot of 50s. Uh, Stephen Schomacher in Xenia, Ohio. Christopher Rivera in Austin, Texas. Raymond Berry in Lost Wages, Nevada. And last but not least, Sir Robert Deconay in Fairfax, Fairfax, Virginia. And thank you to these producers who helped bring everyone episode 1,302 of our grand experiment of value for value. If you made it through this entire program, you're wondering how this part of it works. It's very simple. Whatever you got out of the show, just convert that to a number, put that value into PayPal or Zelle or any of the, go to Dvorak.org slash NA to find out how to send it to us. Uh, $5 may be a very valuable product for you, and we accept that as such and appreciate it. Uh, but it's up to you. That's uh, Everyone's value is different, and it has kept this show going now. We're in our 14th year and very proud of the producers that put this all together. And we look forward to our next program, the episode that drops on Sunday, 
For instructions, go to Dvorak.org slash N-A. And we'll do a jobs karma for everybody who needs it. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Karma. Well, here we are, the 10th. We're a quarter way through December, and we do have a few, just a few names on the birthday list. As Sir Niels Stenoli Scheich, uh, he celebrates on the 12th, and he will turn 34. Steve Braunstra, uh, Braunstra says happy birthday to his smoking hot wife, Jessica. She turns 44 tomorrow. And Michael Manzel, it's his birthday on April 1st. I have no idea why he put it in so early, but we're happy to congratulate you in advance. And happy birthday to everybody here from the best podcast in the universe. Jeez. <laughs> what? This, uh, that's in advance, to say the least. That's kind of in, in advance. That's he little... is figuring he's going overboard by well, that. Yeah, why not? Two knightings today, and one is a black knight. This is David Fox, um, who did... Uh, he actually had enough for an instant knight. Somehow, his donation got mentioned, his note got read, uh, but he was not knight, no, knighted. Um, I th- we made another mistake on the last show, and a lot of people weighed in, and I went back, and I went and listened, and indeed, we somehow missed him. So, uh, let's bring Aww. out the extra black blade for him. If you got I got one here, oh, laminated. Black steel, very nice. David Fox and Niels, hop on up, gentlemen, both of you. Today, become Knights of the Noah Jenner Roundtable. Very well deserved, thanks to your support in the show. In the amount of $1,000 or more, and I am proud to pronounce the case, the... Sir Big Loaf of the Big Loaf Autonomous Zone, a.k.a. the Blaz, and he's a Black Knight, and Sir Niels Den Oli Shag. Gentlemen, both of you are welcome here for our Hookers and Blow, our Rent Boys and Chardonnay, our Shorten Brow and Naderveet. We also have uh, English Muffins with Butter and Honey, we've got Harvest and Haldol, we've got Ruben S. Woman and Rosé, Geishas and Zake, Vodka and Vanilla, Bung Hits and Bourbon, Sparkling Cider and Escorts, Ginger Ale and Gerbils, Breast Milk and Pablum, And the mutton and the meat, I know it's the favorite. It's what you will all taste regardless of what you ordered here for the table. And remember, on your way out, head over to noagendanation.com slash rings and let Eric Sashil know where we can send your beautiful No Agenda Night slash Dame ring along with your sealing wax because it is a signet ring and your official certificate of authenticity. And thank you for your courage and for supporting the best podcast in the universe. No Agenda. Parties taking place everywhere. No agenda meetup land. If uh, it is forbidden by your local laws, it is a protest. So you protest. can go to noagendameetups.com or noagendaprotest.com. You can show the cops, hey, I'm here to protest. It was organized. We got a brand new one taking place tomorrow in Coca, Florida. It's the Coca, Florida OTG meetup at 530. Oh. Uh, and you know, the Christian Coffins will be organizing that. On Saturday, the DEC DEC. Hmm. South Austin NA Local 512, that is in Doc's backyard. Sir Scott Baronet of the Armory. Oh, Armory. I, well, maybe I'll have to see if I can uh, visit that one. That'll be uh, on Saturday. It's doable. Also on Saturday, the Houston Raging Surge Super Spreader Luncheon <laughs> at the Rodeo Goat. I love it. The Houston Raging Surge Super Spreader Luncheon. Brian Clark organizing for you. Also on Saturday, Eastern North Carolina Hot Pockets Christmas Bash. Ho, ho, ho. Time to drink and be merry. Let's get together and shrink each other amygdalas with good old no agenda vibes. We'll send out the address once you RSVP. And that is the very same Sir Sir, uh, David Fox, who is now a Black Knight. Uh, Columbus, Ohio, small amygdala meetup at 6 o'clock on Saturday at Bruno's Restaurant, Pizza and Restaurant. And New Orleans area meet up at 3 o'clock on Saturday at the River Shack Tavern in Jefferson, Louisiana. Uh, we've got Pittsburgh Christmas Party at 7 o'clock, and that is also on Saturday. And the note there, regardless of what our overlords tell us, Christmas isn't canceled here. Hosting the party at our house. If you're crazy enough to come, we're crazy enough to welcome people we haven't met yet into our home. Emma is brave, and we appreciate ah. that. <laughs> and on the way, December 19th, Western New York. Oh, that'll be a good one. Uh, Quebec City, we've got the tiny amygdala in Anchorage, uh, Alaska, the Garden Grove, California, Flight 010 of the No Agenda, and uh, Nashville Noel Agenda. Also, the Very Fine People meet up in Charlottesville, Virginia, at the Trump Winery, uh, um, I think that's the 19th, 
And then uh, Durham, a good one. North Carolina, January 16th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh, this is way, this is January. Oh, so much, so far ahead. Uh, that's the No Agenda Meetups. It's where you can hang out with people who listen to the show. That means there will be no triggering. You're all kind of on the same page. You don't have to agree, but no one's going to fight. We're going to drink and be merry, have a good time, sing in the morning, and meet other human resources during this time. The government is locking you up and shutting you down. It's just like a protest, or is it a party? No Agenda Meetups. Sometimes you want to go hang out with all the nights and days. You want to be where you want to be, triggered or held flame. You want to be where everybody feels the same. Yeah, yeah. It's like a party. Like a party. Like a big party. Um, I do have... Two clips for the end of show, if you don't have... Oh, do we have an end of show ISO? Do you have something? I have a couple here. I have Do It Right. Uh, Hold on. Uh, I'm I'm lowering my desk. I'm going to try to mute the microphone when I do that. Do It Right. Let's see what this is. Do It Right. Okay. Mm, Moi. Moi. That's all I got. That's all you got? This stinks. I have a Cuomo... Yeah. <laughs> and I have a Kaylee, which I got for you, the Kaylee. Had you not heard? I thought you were on this email. I actually su- surprised you didn't bring this Kaylee clip. I'll, I'll bring some Kaylee. Here it is. Next show. Be quiet. Lay down. Go home. Nothing to see here. That's way too long for It's too show. long. Yes. Well, and so what do we do? Well, they had the Cuomo one. You think you like the Cuomo one? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, much okay. better than mine. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll keep the Cuomo one. Um, well, well, before you get to your two clips, let's mm-hmm. at least get that one clip out of the way. Mm-hmm. This is that idiot from uh, Michigan. As she was a, a representative, for Cynthia Johnson. Oh, oh yeah. Now this turned out to be, you know, it was this, just to set it up. When I saw this, the first thing I thought was out of context. I need to find out when this was said, what it was about, because it was immediately being uh, positioned as she's uh, threatening uh, threatening Republicans, Trump supporters, and I wasn't so sure. But then it turned out she got kicked off of some committee or something because all of her this. committees. <laughs> she's wow. got kicked off all her committees, and she's under dis- disciplinary action, as she should be. Set up. So she threatens the Trump supporters and with a just a little like a TikTok thing or something. So was this retaliating against something that happened to her? Was yeah, she had been uh, she had gotten a lot of death threats about something else she did, some other anti-Trump thing, and she right. was very irked about this, and so she did this. So this is just a warning to you Trumpers. Uh-oh. Be careful. Uh-oh. Walk lightly. We ain't playing with you. Enough of the shenanigans. Enough is enough. And for those of you who are soldiers, you know how to do it. Do it right. Be in order. Make them pay. I love y'all. <laughs> love you. Love you. Love you. Mean it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. She got into a lot of trouble. As she should. That's that's she, and she's just a creep. I mean, but now do you think that do you think that uh when she says that, does she have warriors that she speaks to? Are are there people who are going to I mean, this is something that kind of is no longer a front and center of the news about how once Trump is out, they're gonna get they get the Republicans and get everyone that supported him and get him, get him, get him. Is there do you think she really speaks to people who can do this? No. Okay. Good. So she's There's just bullshit self aggrandizing. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. That's it? That's your last one? Well, I think so, yeah. I'm gonna let you take it out take it out. Uh okay. Two. This is from the Cartoon Network. More um uh more propaganda to uh Mind control the children with, uh, they should not be watching this. We debunked this, I think you debunked this story uh, about, and I can't remember where it came up, it was a Black Lives Matter story about the uh, Thomas Edison not being the inventor of the light bulb, uh, but a oh, black yeah. man being the inventor of the light bulb. 
Yeah, I did. And uh, you want to recap why that's bullcrap briefly? The guy, well, the guys, the guy had a patent. He, what he did was he it, it did an improvement on the light bulb, mm-hmm. and then Edison hired him to work for at his labs. Right. <laughs> that's the way the story so, goes. Yeah. That's pretty much the story. It wasn't like he invented the light bulb, but they they played it up as though he did when he didn't. So the Cartoon Network has a whole series about Black history. And this is just one of them. It's a it's a classroom setting, by the way, where the te- this is the teacher. Right, class. Can anyone tell me who invented the light bulb? Thomas Edison. That's not entirely true. The light bulb could more rightfully be attributed to Louis Latimer, the black inventor behind the filament inside the bulb. His invention made light bulbs affordable and efficient enough for the general public, bringing electric light into households around the world. Well, so now you know. Okay, so that's just your little tidbit, but then it continues. Wait, is that it? Hold on. We're not going to mention why he invented the filament? To create a better standard of living for people who had only just been freed from slavery? Are we going to ask why kids are apparently learning about Thomas Edison? Thomas Edison! And not learning about Louis Latimer? These textbooks are incomplete. There were black Roman warriors, black medieval knights, black classical musicians, black cowboys, black fighter pilots. Where are they? I worry about you humans because you only live, what, about a hundred years? You rely on these stories to know your own history. Thanks to systemic racism, most of your storytellers (laughs) prioritize white accomplishments, which leaves you with an incomplete picture. Ask yourself as you're learning history, who's telling the story? Was this modified to make white readers comfortable? Are major details being left out that would credit people of color and center their point of view? Honestly, I should have asked for script approval before agreeing to do this. We'll do some rewrites. I'm sorry. We didn't know. Well, so now you know. I swear. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. White man bad because we steal everyone's valor. I find this too far. This goes too far what they're doing here. Well, they got you. This is we're gonna. You, you can say that all you want, but unfortunately, the the Zoomers and the Millennials that are coming into these positions of of decision making, always white liberals, mm-hmm. uh, are are gonna continue to put this uh, dreck into the public domain until you just that you just stop doing business with the companies. I mean, I'm I won't put up with that stuff. It's just a bad history. I, I just don't know why anyone would watch it. I just keep. I'd keep my kids from watching Nickelodeon or wherever the Cartoon Network is where, where that yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah, homeschooling. This, it's, 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 not, it's, it's hurting their own business. Yeah. Oh, the Cartoon Network's business? No, all these companies that do that have these social justice warriors that sneak into the company to hire right. their buddies, mm-hmm. which is a real problem. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm in now. I'll stay here a couple of years. They don't make a lot of money. They, always get, they come into these companies because they, they'll take low pay. And then bitch about it later. A man got paid more than I did, but they'll take the low pay to get in there, and then they'll start hiring their friends. And next thing you know, it's taken over. Like Bon Appetit's a good example of that kind of thing. Bon Appetit restaurant. Yeah, the magazine of the king. You know, they had oh. one woman who. Oh right, right, right. Made right. a big fuss because she wasn't getting paid enough for her videos that she volunteered to do. Well, there'll be none of that here on the No Agenda Show. We're racist and proud of it. There's only two of us. <laughs> that's only two. What more do you need? That's, that's more than enough, I'd say. And with that, we uh, conclude our broadcast day, but we look forward to seeing y'all again on Sunday as we move towards some final dates here in the presidential election 2020. It's going to be fun to see what happens. Keep your eye on China and Devil Storm! And, restore. and remember to support us at Dvorak.org slash NA. And thank you all for producing this program because that is how you do it, with your time, your talents, and your treasure. Coming to you from Opportunity Zone 33 here in the capital of the Drone Star State, Austin, Texas. In the morning, everybody, I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley, where, uh, I don't know, there's nothing going on. It seems to me everyone's locked down, but they're somehow driving around like maniacs. I'm John C. Dvorak. And in Austin, not locked down, having a good time. No Rona here, so they say. 
Talk to you on Sunday, everybody. Until then, adios, mofos. Oh, wait. We got Matt Lazari, Jesse Coy Nelson, Rolando Gonzalez uh, for the end of show mixes, and Grimerica is coming up next on NoAgendaStream.com. Got it out. Until then, everybody, adios, mofos, and such. Bye. Restlessness. Extreme anxiety. Pacing. A constant urge to move. Hey guys. Are you very nervous but very excited? Mwah. Thank you. This may be the most important speech I've ever made. I want to provide an update on our ongoing efforts. As president, I have no higher duty than to defend the laws and the Constitution of the United States, which is now under coordinated assault and siege, the right to vote. But out of pain comes possibility. Out of frustration comes progress. They had it covered. Release the Kraken. Oh, absolutely, and it's uh, it's been uh, organized and, and conducted with the help of Silicon Valley people, the, the big tech companies, the social media companies, and even the media companies. And I'm going to release the Kraken. Now is the time to do what you're told. <laughs> and I think it really is something that we should be doing. Release the Kraken. <laughs> Yeah, so the explosion of cases across the whole country is worse now than it was. The good news is the lethality of the virus is way down. The good news is apparently there's a virus coming. We are in a very different place now than we were then. Well, we, 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 we hope it won't. And again, you know, we're working on mass distribution of the virus. And I want you to think about that. What happens next? Now he gets medicine so did he actually have the, the, the virus? Uh, I think so. Time out, time out. I will, I will ask that he be, he be disciplined for that. Volcanoes burn through more fuel than humans ever have. But we are churning out emissions 14 times faster. In American English. Anyways. In British English. Anyways. In Australian English, anyways. Welsh English, anyways. <laughs> uh, some of that is, is not dramatic, where, you know, it's just, you know, super painful. Don't talk to me that way. You just don't like the way. I'm the president of the United States. Don't ever talk to the president that way. Reckless incompetence and intentional cruelty. Congratulations. This is what they believe. Madam Deputy Speaker, I have just witnessed an elderly lady peacefully protesting with a handful of other people be arrested and carry spread eagle to a police van. Rob of her dignity for having the courage to protest about having her fundamental rights and those of my constituents and others removed. They're God's children. This is not a stay-at-home order. But the best way for us to avoid a stay-at-home order is to stay home. The History Channel, where the past comes alive. And at the heart was really the issue. Of Election fraud at its worst. Uh, and that issue remained in the background. It was, uh, you know constant source of tension between states and its election fraud it was a way of life actually then eventually of course it erupted into what became known as the civil war 2021 20, is a massive vote of fraud on the night of the election the president was up hundreds of thousands of votes in various swing states somehow magically by morning those votes had dwindled away and they are now gone
Yesterday, this is from YouTube, we can bring this up, was the safe harbor deadline for the U.S. presidential election and enough states have certified their election results to determine a president-elect. Given that, we will start removing any piece of content uploaded today or any time after that misleads people by alleging that widespread fraud or errors change the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. We all know that it's vital that a critical mass of Americans get vaccinated so we can return to some degree of normalcy, but we also know that there's a lot of skepticism. I will not be getting the first round of COVID vaccines because I have high-risk health issues. I feel that the vaccines are being rushed due to political and social pressure, and mistakes are probably going to be made. Government's been trying for almost 30 years to develop a coronavirus vaccine, and it's been unsuccessful. COVID-19 vaccine makers are exempt from liability. The data that everybody with a high dose had a side effect. These side effects are expected to be mild, but could really impact your daily life. Everyone with the nose make a are going to rush to get paid, to keep their company moving, to get some scam grant or whatever country is going to pay them to make their bullshit device. Yeah, but some of that is, is not dramatic where, you know, it's just, you know, super painful. But yes, there we need to make sure there's not severe side effects. To the world, there were two fraudulent papers, one in the New England Journal of Medicine, one in Lancet, published by individuals interested in doing evil. I would recommend to people to not abandon all public health measures just because you've been vaccinated. It just strikes me that there are so many people out there that are conspiratorial nowadays, right? And they're, they're skeptical of any advice that comes from the government. But Anthony Fauci tells me this vaccine is safe uh, and can uh, vaccinate, you know, immunize you from getting COVID. Absolutely, I'm going to take it. I may end up taking it on, on TV or having it filmed just so that people know that, uh, that uh, you know, I, I, I trust this science. The best podcast in the universe. Adios, mofo. Dvorak.org slash N-A- <laughs> Yeah. Podcast around the clock. This is the No Agenda stream. You are listening to the No, no, no Agenda stream, where freedom lives and censorship comes to get its ass kicked. If they make you laugh, if they And then they run, you know, a 20 minute segment where they try the oxygen saturation and they register it. So it registers uh, three to 4% lower and three to 4% lower is, is a concern. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grand America show. Uh, we are going to be chatting with freedom for Canada a little bit later. Why is the webcam on? That's troubling. Uh, hmm. It's a fun chat. It's a good chat. It's scary chat in some ways. And we're going to put, we push this note. We just did this chat last night. We're pushing to the front of the line because there's a rally this weekend and a lawsuit next week and some court and all that sort of stuff. And it was worth getting out. We got scrambling Graham over here. Hey, buddy. Scrambling around before. So, what's your meeting for? Oh, it's just a recovery meeting. Yeah. So, did you realize that this is a loophole? Uh, yeah, I did. You're yeah, immune. You can get past the gathering law. Yeah, if it's for a support uh, group. Well, that's interesting because we've already been online for eight months, so I it kind of it's kind of not. Do-